Well, hey, hello, and welcome to Tuesday Night Festivities. Karen Bryant here with you, KB. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, so it is Tuesday night. We're going to have Jason Perillo with us on the show tonight. Uh, let me just see. I just literally, oh, okay, uh, okay. I just got a text from Hinata Laranja, so I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. But yes, the 27-time World Jiu-Jitsu champion, Hinata Laranja, will be joining me as ever. This is episode 49 of the show. Welcome to the show. And I should say, welcome to those of you, you know, this show is now available as an audio podcast as well. I must admit, I, you know, this show initiated as a as more of a visual broadcast and that is probably always where we're going to spend the most effort i guess if i don't know if that sounds right but uh but i just want to say this is an audio podcast now folks because a lot of people have asked about it so we have made it available currently it is available on spotify on amazon music on stitcher and it is pending on apple podcasts so i guess that's 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 my shirt's up uh, so I guess that's upcoming as well. It's just taking, I don't know why. Right now, I believe I have uploaded the last 11 episodes and then we will, I will keep uploading more. I'm going to kind of work my way backwards, but I will put this episode up immediately after the show. So you'll be able to download this one right away. But uh, so there's basically, I think, 11 episodes up there now. And I'll just keep adding a couple every couple few days. But you should, you know, subscribe to whatever, you know, whatever place that you do and you can get them there and uh, we'll keep making them available. But yeah, a lot of people have asked for that. So there you go audio podcast available of this now too. So this is episode 49, like I said. So why don't I tell you guys? Um, so, oh, so, you know, somebody says, uh, Havoc or Javik, why do we start the show all day in a way contender series is on? Look at when we started the show, that show wasn't on. I mean, it's basically that simple. This is episode 49, which is crazy to think that we're only a couple of weeks away from our one year anniversary. But at the time we weren't competing with that. Uh, you know, my life doesn't revolve around that. Uh, I, I, you know, if I'm not working on it, I can't say that it's like the forefront of my mind all the time. Uh, anyway, so yeah, there's a lot of time when that show isn't on and we are. So here you go. Anyway, yeah, Jason is going to be an awesome guest. I've known him for several years. Uh, I don't know if he and Hanato know each other. They kind of maybe probably know a lot of the same people, but I don't know if they've actually ever met. So this could be kind of interesting. Uh, Tim is saying Perillo is his father. We'll get to that. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. Oh, okay. So anyway, here's what's coming up on the show tonight. So Jason Perillo interview, then we are going to recap uh, and have our reactions to UFC 278. I've got some footage of all the uh, the uh, uh, main event fights. Again, for the audio podcast, a little bit difficult, but just imagine people fighting, people getting punched in the face and, uh, you know, some head kicks, things like that. Uh, although we don't even get the head kick, the visual, they don't always show us the, uh, the finish there. So at any rate, uh, we will do that. But then also we are going to talk about kind of some uh, what the heck moments. And I'm just saying the nice way here, uh, moments in fights because the Luke Rockhold bloodbath, you know, moment was a little bit bizarre. I want to get your take on that, how he was kind of rubbing his face all over Paulo Costa during their fight. We will get into that. And, you know, Jason Perillo, our guest tonight, was in Luke's corner. So we will definitely ask Jason what his take was on that because that was weird. And we can talk about some other moments. I remember way back in the day watching BJ Penn lick the blood off his gloves and that kind of threw me for a loop. But there have been some 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 crazy moments, you know, some not all of them bloody like that. Some of them just kind of wild, like when Nick just decided to lay down in the octagon. Oh, I love Nick Diaz. Okay, so anyway, we'll get into some of that. And, you know, we will talk about some of our favorite TV and movie coaches. Since Jason is a coach, we're having him on. So start thinking about your favorite movies, your, your favorite TV shows, the coaches in those, which ones you love. We'll get into a discussion of those. And, of course, as ever, we have uh, Q&A time with you for your relationship questions for you. If you're heartbroken, if you're uh, a lonely heart, uh, you know, whatever you've got going on in your mind, in your relationships, your you want to be a lover. You're trying to get better at things. You're trying to get rid of someone. You're trying to attract someone. I don't know. 
I don't have the answers, but this man often does. Let's welcome him into the show now, ladies and gentlemen, folks. He is the 27-time world jiu-jitsu champion, Mr. Henato Laranja. Hi. Yeah. Oh, where are you? Oh. Ah. What? Hey. Up again? Another ah. one. They've missed you. Well, he's a jolly good fellow. How are you? I'm core. Cool. Oh, look at this one. I look good today, don't I? Oh, you meant you. Oh. Oh, hey. I, sorry. Oh, hi. I'm here, too. Oh, I forgot I was yours even in here. It's not a mirror. Oh, yours is a mirror. You know Do you what have I a mirror? Like, is this a mirror? I'm like Hitchard Gear. Or no. I, I'm Are you like American, Mel, American Gigolo? That, but I am also look like um, Mel Gibson in The Year of Living Dangerously. Okay. God, are you? Like, I'm a reporter in Laos or whatever, and I'm hunting to the, you know, like, the car bombing happened, and my shirt go like yeah. that. I go, now, who God, are you? Or Ray Fines in The English Patient. That too, but I'm, like, I'm looking over the cliff, and it's go like this, and I have my hands in my, in my chinos, and I look off, and it go like this, like, God, are you? And you find you out see? I'm a Nazi who... Who moved to Brazil for her. Right, but we Stop love you right. anyway. At this point, we've fallen for you and we can't help it. So well, yeah, right. at this point, there's no turning back for her. <laughs> oh God, are you? So we hate ourselves for loving you. Isn't that the way it is all the time? Here? I guess so. Hey, uh, <laughs> listen, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, yes, the end vendor. It is Tuesday already. You're welcome. You're welcome for it being another Tuesday. <sighs> so Renato, uh -oh. how have you how, uh oh how have you been? How have you been? Oh no. Where did you go? Oh my goodness. Uh oh. It's I, I'm not on the fucking one. <laughs> I I literally don't understand. You're frozen. Your video your video's frozen. Can you speak? Say something I so what we I can at least to. hear you. I'm okay. I'm here. What do you want? Are you are you there? Okay, I got an idea. One that I've You're there. tried yet. Which is what? Oh, okay, but I also got an idea. Okay. Which is the only thing I can think of is the light bulbs in my place, with the exception of the fucking um uh, the hang is is uh, futuristic. You know, it's I control of the phone. Take them off the Wi-Fi, baby girl. You gotta take that stuff off. So let me. I thought we determined that once a long time ago of... that they were sucking too much Wi-Fi energy. I thought we came to that conclusion a long time ago. I don't think so. I I don't know. I let can't me just try. It's the only thing I can. Think I remember of. that. All I'm saying is, is I that that I'm... sounds familiar to me. Okay, well, I, I'm going to, listen, tell them an old story. Yeah. Sing them a Jimmy Crack corn. Uh, tell them anything. I'll be right back. Okay, got it. Take a lap. Take a lap. Okay, yeah. So, folks, um, for, the, you know, some of you are familiar with the trials and tribulations of the Cricket Wireless uh, with Henato. You know, a long time ago when the show initiated, we were on Instagram and, we it, it would it would go well up until it wouldn't and then one of us would have issues and we wouldn't be able to tell whose wi-fi it was and uh you know we we kind of came to the conclusion it looks like it seems like unfortunately uh in the favela there are more problems go figure so uh we're going to try to work that out but i remember and some of you may remember this as well mentioning the wi-fi on the light bulbs now Maybe it was on during the show. Maybe this was just a conversation that he and I had afterwards. But I specifically remember him talking about his Wi-Fi light bulbs and me suggesting that, yes, indeed, they were taking too much power and that he should probably turn those off. Uh, but apparently he did not. So once again, we are in the situation. So meanwhile, let's take a couple of questions. So, okay, so... Okay, so, yeah, inside, I think you're right, the Ender Bender, inside his modem is a hamster running on a wheel. Dustin Freeman, he has the crickets, 
It's so true. It's so it Tim, it's Hanat's working off a dial-up internet from a CD he found in a limited edition Wheaties Acai box in 1995. Sounds very, very much like perhaps the truth is suspectrum. Spot on. Jesus, saludos, beleza. Um, Regardless, saludos. Um, um, uh, hi, everybody. I uh, just speculos internet. He's got the, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. It's okay. So yeah, Jay Crockett says, they came late on purpose and not just penthouse favela Wi-Fi is still wanky. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. So now he's saying the link doesn't work. Uh, let me send him another uh, another one. I have to send him a new link. Uh, I'm going to do that right now. And okay. I'm going. This is riveting television, isn't it? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Sent. New one. Oh my goodness. With all the typos, set new one. Let's see. I'm so sorry for this, folks. I really do apologize. Uh, at any rate, hopefully this works and we can get Anato back in here. Uh, hopefully it does work for Jason, who should be coming on any moment now. Once again, Jason Perillo, uh, who is our guest tonight. Jason was in um, uh, Luke Rockhold's corner this weekend. He works with Chito Vera, so we can talk to him about that knockout that only happened two weeks ago. He's working with Mackenzie Dern. She's got a fight coming up, and if you saw, I think today, just today, he and or Mackenzie posted some fire footage of them training today, and she is looking great. So she has just jumped leaps and bounds since working with Jason. So there's a lot to talk to him about. But like I said, he and I have known each other for quite some time. Jason has been in the game. He's worked with Tito for years, a bunch of people. So if you have questions for Jason, which I'm sure you guys do, get them ready. Uh, he really is just a very cool guy. And I definitely, definitely, we will get to some questions from him. Um, I mean, I'm listening. He's got an extension cord leeching his neighbor's internet like Michael B. Jordan in the wire. You could be right. You could be right. You know what? You really, <laughs> you really could be right. Uh, okay. Hey, so listen, I want to get to, okay. Okay. I want to get to some things. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let's try one more time. 27 times. By now, he might have even earned another title. 27-time World Jiu-Jitsu Champion, Mr. Nato Laranja. Hi. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Look who's here. Well, I don't know. If this don't work. It looks better already. Oh, I bet. I bet it does. <laughs> Wouldn't you love it? Uh, look at that one. Anyway, where was I? The year of living dangerously. Listen, I don't care what happens. I need this story now. <laughs> hey, I was letting the people know beforehand some of the other things coming up today. We're going to talk about some of the what the F moments in MMA fights based on the fact what that the Luke Rockhold gave Paolo Costa a bloodbath this Saturday, uh, which was kind of weird. I, you know what? You know what's funny? It was very... Oh, I guess we got to save it for later, though. Huh? No, no, go ahead. We can start on it and then what I it's thought like a was, teaser. What I think is funny, yeah, it's weird. But I'm surprised it didn't happen. Like, I'm surprised this is the first time it's really happened. You know what I'm saying? Because... No, I'm not. No, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> because it's weird. I it's think creepy. of it all the time. I think to myself, like, it, it's the only time it happened on purpose, you know? But... You've seen it where somebody's just gushing on top, you know? And I always think to myself, I would try to aim for the eyes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't hub it like that, but just let that to drip in there, you know? Why not? They created that. They shouldn't have hit you like that. They shouldn't have created that. They shouldn't have did harm to you if you didn't want that. I don't know, man. Um, I... I loved it. Personally, I was laughing my fucking ass off. And I, I thought... Is that you or me? The alarm? Oh, okay. That's all. No, there's one. It's like the it's like down the street, but I could hear it and it's really frustrating. No, I heard I'm sorry that, that like, you guys can hear it as well. 
No, no, it don't matter. Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody can hear it. It's literally my doors are closed. No, I'm just making sure it's not me. Um, no. So um, that's your conscience going. Yeah, I'm because I'm doing. like, what the fuck? I'm not um, so what, what was I saying? Oh, um, I just you're saying you're surprised the bloodbath doesn't happen more. I, I no, not that, but or, but but it was funny to me because I'm like, it's uh, how called this so petty? Like he's like. Fuck you! <laughs> like it was, it was the perfect send off for him. You know, the last thing you remember is him it, being like, "Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit." <laughs> I love that it one. It was on brand in a weird way. Yes, I, I'll agree. I'll agree with you on that. I'll, I wouldn't I'll have agree. had it any other way, to be honest. I'll agree with you on that. Um, I'm not sure. Um, um, oh, so listen, Jay Crockett should have said, I should have listened to the bearded dragon. That brings up a good point. So Chidi picked Costa to win. And if folks remember, Chidi also picked Leon Edwards to win. So Chidi went 2-0 and on his picks this weekend. And he's 5-2 and overall in his last picks because he had picked Curtis Blades. He had picked Yair Rodriguez. He had picked Jamal Hill. Um, the he only place where well, he faltered with Dominic Cruz and he faltered with Sarukian. Um, but, but otherwise he's been on a streak and, um, you know, pe people might want to start paying attention to Chidi's predictions. Oh, Chidi, you know, I'm not heady yet to, to, to bet the farm on Chidi's prediction. Okay. Okay. But, uh, uh, but anyway, I digress, but the, but the, in terms of the bloodbath, in terms of the, um, I, it, I, I don't know if it was funny. It was definitely a what the, what the, a, what the heck am I looking at moment. You didn't um, laugh what happened? I mean, I guess I, I guess I was sort of in shock and sort of laughing at like, what the, what am I, like, what is happening? Like, in like abject horror, but also a little bit of yeah, I guess of what am I, what am I, what am I seeing? It was weird, dude. Yeah, it, it, it it's weird. Guess what? You know what's funny? It's all um, it's all arbitrary. What's weird is that we're watching two people beat the shit out of each other to a bloody pulp in the first place. Yeah. You can knee and elbow and kick someone's head off and shut the lights out. And then when they stiff as a board, you give them a hammer fist. And to <laughs> us, we're like, Not, well done or whatever. But then if you hub your face with the blood onto him, that's distaste. But not stomping someone's brains out, that's not distasteful. It's just funny. It's arbitrary. It is arbitrary and it, it's all primal. So it's a sliding scale of what's primal and what's too primal and what's like. It's just like sex. Uh, it's like this. I, here's my perfect example of this. Some, I, I think I may have mentioned this before, but if I did, so what? You're going to hear it again. Every once in a while, if it's hot out or whatever, and I'm inside and it's hot as fuck, and I'm just in my boxer show, uh, my I don't even wear boxers, and my, I'm in my underwear. You know, I mean, my okay. chivy whitey, my fruit to the loom. Yeah. Okay? Then I know I got to get the mail. I, I go fuck and the mail is by the street. Okay. So I got to walk all the way. I live in a guest house. I, I yeah. got to walk all the way to the street. What, what happened? You okay there? You can hear me or no? I can hear you. Oh, okay. So I go fuck it. I'm going to try to make it to the street without maybe somebody's going to see me. Okay. And I'm kind of chipped off there, whatever. I get my fucking mail. And then sometimes somebody see me and then they look like, God, are you like, like it's a goddamn shame or whatever. Or it's somebody going, oh, God, are you? You know, like right. it could be a young gentleman who's like, oh, um, uh, okay. Funny enough, that's a big deal in this situation. But if we happen to be on a beach, there would be not a second thought of the same outfit. You understand? I hear you. And so all of a sudden it's distaste there, but in this setting is no, oh, that's normal. But we may hey, it listen. Out. All right. Well, listen. There's another person we can ask their opinion on the whole yeah. bloodbath, and that is a man who is in the corner. He is one of the most highly revered uh, coaches in the entire MMA game. He is known I mean, for yeah. his striking. But listen, this man is just like 
He is a bad mother effer. He helped make Michael Bisping a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest, Mr. Jason Perillo. Oh, God, are you? What up? How are you? Hello, sweet Karen Bryant. How are you? Hi, I'm great. It's great to see you. Good to see you. Where's up? Do you Welcome, you Hanato. Doing, meet Jason. Jason, Hanato, I don't I'm know if good. you guys know each other. Okay, so. What, what happened? You can't hear? Uh-oh. Can he not hear us now? You can't can you hear? hear us, Jace? There you are. Oh, yeah, oh, there you are. Okay. So, yeah, Jason, Jason, meet Hanato. Hanato, meet Jason. I don't know if you guys know each other. Pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. I, I was I was talking to Chiki today. Uh, uh, Chiki. Uh, Gosen. Oh, Tiki. Oh, Tiki. <laughs> Chiki. Uh, that's what I said. And this... <laughs> and, I remember I did some stuff at his at, at the the place uh, years ago with uh, oh. Ch Ch Chicago and I think Hob Hazel was there. In Huntington Beach. Yeah, and and I want to say you might have been there and I can't remember if we hung out there or not. Is this the first time we've seen each other on the flash? I do. I don't know. I probably not. I've I've seen you before though. That's for sure. I don't know if it's in the flesh or not, but you would have remembered that. I think. I think I would. Yeah. I mean, I can already tell I would have remembered that by this conversation, the short conversation we've had so far. <laughs> wow, poor yeah, it's pretty right. special. Oh, am I losing you? Oh, oh well, we can hear you. You froze your video froze a little bit, but we can still hear you. His remind me of my internet now. I know with the cricket going around. You know what everywhere. I felt better though? I was listening to a, that this podcast with David Spade and fucking yeah. Barbie. And that shit happened to them too. I went, oh, thank God. It's not just me. You know, like they was all fucked up. I think it does happen everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, um, he's still here. Jay, I see the, I'm here. I'm yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your video, your video froze, but we can still hear you. So maybe it'll just kick kick back in. But um, I do want to ask you. Um, you know, we were just talking about the bloodbath. Obviously, I wish we could see you. I wonder. Actually, maybe you know what? If you hang up and come back in, maybe. Well, wait, okay, but not to you see me. I can see you guys. Yeah. Well, yeah you. You frozen. Your video You're froze. Frozen. Here, hold on a second. Let, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me take him out and then put him back in. Da, 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 da. Hold on. Are you there, Jace? Uh, I'm here, but I can call, I can hang up and call you back if you like. Maybe he yeah, should try to... 5G instead of um, Wi Fi. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I don't I know sit, because we right... can hear you perfectly, but now we can't see you. I'm sitting right next to my modem. Did I press a button? Maybe I can see all of us together. You look. Like... You look like Shaq Congo now. Yeah. <laughs> the darkness. Well, the dark. Twin I'm very brother. dark right now. The darkness. The darkness. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I got, you know, technology is not my friend. There you are. No. Hey, there you are again. Now it look like an old 90s, early 90s video, like uh, calling me bad or whatever. You know, like, <laughs> you know what I'm, oh, God. No. Fuck. No. Yeah, are you on Wi-Fi or are you on the? Are you on yeah, your cellular? Yeah, I'm on Wi-Fi. You want me to cut off my Wi-Fi? Yeah, you know, turn it off the Wi-Fi and just go on cellular because I think that's what we found out with Hanato's is that sometimes the Wi-Fi isn't as good as the cellular. And he's out. Ah, okay. Well, yeah. well, I'm sure he'll be back. You know, you know what's interesting what's when that? I tried turning off the lights before and all that shit. I don't think yeah. I did. Oh, there. Oh, hey, there you are. This is the best. How are Wait. you? We're back. Dude, that's way better. Okay. Perfect. Now we can start. Yay. Clapping. Yay. Oh, wait. I meant to do clapping. Now we're supposed to be clapping. What was it? A laughter? It's laughter. But yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, he can that's be perfect. like the neighbor, the wacky neighbor that comes over. The wacky side. neighbor. Okay. So listen. So Jason, we have to ask you. We were talking about this before. The, the bloodbath. What the hell were you thinking when your boy Luke decides to just like rub every, all, all of that blood, all of that over Paula Costa during the fight? Because now that's like one of the most uh, memorable, infamous, like that will be one of the most forever talked about scenes ever now. Yeah, yeah I know. It was, it was pretty, well, it shows that he's a crude madman now, doesn't it? I mean, totally. Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, good for him. I mean, just kind of. I mean, for me, it was showing his spirit is hard. I mean, I, he, I, he, 
I said the same stuff. So I I had no problem with it for some reason. Oh, I had no I had no problem. I just kind of just you just saying fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just just fuck you. If I'm not gonna you know if I'm not gonna finish, fuck. I mean. I'll tell you this. That fight was closer, I think, than most people think. Too at the end of the day, if he oh, didn't yeah. walk, if he didn't walk around like this, yep. I mean, he's walking around the room, but his head is still fucking drilling him. You know what I, I mean? Agree. It was a, yeah. it was a, it was a street fight. You know what I mean? And at the end yeah. of the day, it was a closer fight, I think, than most people think. And I think, I mean, obviously, Luke got tired. I mean, Costa was tired as well. Don't get me wrong, but. Yeah, you know, Luke was quite exhausted. I mean, we, we weren't able to get much sparring in at all for this fight, so that makes it very difficult to get, you know, that that uh, that emotional that that nervousness uh, uh, conditioning going as well. So I think you know he fell a little flat there, but it was a hell of a fight. How long had you had him in in Utah? He was in Utah about a week before the fight. I think he got up there Sunday. Um, yeah, so he went straight from Chino Vera's fight straight to uh, – he drove from San Diego to Utah and, you know, stayed there. So, I mean, he so acclimated that, a little bit, but, I mean, I think I think he got more of an emotional exhaustion than he did, yeah. you know. Physically, yeah. the guy's always kind of in shape. I mean, he's a little bit of a freak yeah. of nature, that kid. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. That man, I should say. But at the end of the – you know, I think it really was more of a just a – like he just – Hasn't been a fire line, hasn't fought in three years, hasn't won a fight in five. You know what I mean? So exactly. you gotta, Oh huh? I didn't even so, do that. So fight. why is it though? Why wasn't why didn't you get to do too much sparring? There were some injuries. You know, there were some injuries, and I think you know what happens a lot of times with these with any fighter. I mean, any fighter that's been at the highest pinnacle that I've seen and that I've come across, they tend to, you know, just kinda they just want to make it there. They just want to get to the fight and they just don't mm -hmm. want to take many chances in sparring. And, you know, and they forget yeah. about what that pressure feels like till the actual week of the fight. Now they walk into the week of the fight, they're on the road. They're going, Holy fuck. I forgot how heavy this was. I forgot how intense this is. Fuck. This takes a lot. I mean, no matter what, you know, no matter how many sprints or runs you've done or hit the bag or done, whether they wrestle or whatever you do, you didn't really get that emotional preparation for it, you know, but, Fortunately for me, you know, it was kind of one of the better ways to go out. I mean, most fighters are going to go out losing, aren't they? Not many fighters mm -hmm. win their fight and say, okay, I'm done. I mean, it happens, don't get me wrong, but, but it's, it's rare. A, that's a rarity. And sure. um, if, you're, if you're going to lose a fight, you might as well do it in style. And I think he did it in some pretty good style. He did. And you know what was frustrating is you could clearly see if he wasn't tired, his technique was head and shoulders to me. Uh, above, uh, I mean, not to be smart, my countryman, but <laughs> and he's he, listen, he's a tough fighter, he, he, he's a high level fighter. But to me, Luke Harcourt looked like he was, I mean, in the beginning before it devolved into what happened, yeah, because of the tiredness. It looked yeah. like he was, I thought he was gonna win the fucking fight, you know, I, I thought he'd probably finish the guy. But then that fucking the tiredness and and maybe his nose was clogged. From oh, his nose is busted. That's yeah, all he yeah. kept on saying. All he said after the fight, he's like, "God, he kept on hitting me in my broken nose, man." <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I, it sucks. But I I think he I think he dug himself a, uh, I think he I think he won people over. I think that's very important, you know, because Luke was really got a bad rap for the most part, you know, partially because of you know. A, 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 a accumulation of things, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, his look doesn't help him, you know, being a, 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 a Ralph Lauren model doesn't help anybody right. fight the fight yeah. world, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. But uh, he showed that he had some heart and he showed he had some guts and he, and he, and he pushed through in that fight and I got to be proud of him for it. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It was fun to watch. I mean, kind of. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree that, that, you know, like you were saying, it's rare that, a fighter gets to win and go out on their terms, you know what I mean? And go out on a high like that. And so, yeah, he went out in a memorable fight. It was a close fight. It was a very entertaining fight. And what was great about this fight was that he had a really worthy opponent in, you know, not only inside the octagon, but like even just leading up to it, like there was people cared about it. You know what I mean? People were interested in it. And so even though he didn't win, like you said, he went out in a, in a way that was memorable and, and he got to, and he got to sort of still have his say, 
you know what I mean, in his moment. And he did land a lot of good stuff. I mean, it really, I, I guess it's one of those things that people don't realize until they're in it, that that altitude really does suck, right? Like it really plays a factor in, in the fight. Of course. I, I think everybody felt it. I don't think people realize how much I remember doing. I mean, and what's the altitude of, of, of New Mexico, of Albuquerque? And Santa Fe and shit like that. I forget. I, I, it's about, I, I, is it the same as Denver, right? Like, isn't it mile high the, or more? I remember just doing a fucking, teaching a seminar. And I started, and I'm not even talking about live hauling. I'm talking about just showing techniques. I remember going like, so, get, get <laughs> okay, get you, your partner and start working on this shit. You know no, what I mean? Sure. <laughs> and I, I, was hold, like, I, I was holding the hand pads up and I was getting tired. Yeah, really? you know I mean? I just hold the hand pads, warming them up. I go, fuck, I'm getting tired. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was hunting a little ledge for quartz when I was in uh, Denver, and I swear I was just jogging to fucking there in the suits, and I started. I, I forgot about the altitude. I said, "What the fuck happened? I got Covino. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I can't fucking breathe. I can't. and then I remember I go, "Thank God, the altitude." Oh, God, it I wasn't the Covino. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's tough. I mean, it was, it was, it was an entertaining fight. Um, I know it's tough for him, you know, that he's retiring, but you, today I was put, I mentioned that you posted some footage or I think Mackenzie did of you working with her and she is looking great. She's got a fight coming up October 1st. I'm excited because oh. I'm, I'm working that one. Um, but I feel like you know, we all know what you did with Michael Bisping. Like, I, you know, you're, he credits you for helping make him a champion. And we all know that, that that just, like, would not have happened if he hadn't been working with you. And we have seen the leaps and bounds by which Mackenzie has grown. So what's your assessment of her right now? And, like, what was that like for you to start working with her? Because I feel like knowing, obviously, how amazing she is on the ground, it has to be cool as a coach to know that you get this great raw material with somebody who's already amazing at something and who clearly has a work ethic and to have somebody who I would imagine is so willing to learn in Mackenzie that that must have been pretty great to start working with her. Yeah, she's got a great, yeah, she's got a great spirit, great attitude towards it. I mean, she's, uh, yeah, she's in kind of a fresh canvas. She had been doing a little bit. I mean, there's obviously, uh, yeah, some fundamentals she's got to catch up to. Just right. anything, you know, any, any wrestling, jujitsu, you know, any, any, anything you're, you know, somewhat green at, you know, there's a, there's quite, there's quite a bit of development that happens. I mean, it takes some time, but I think she's come leaps and bounds. I think she's continuing to improve. Um, mm -hmm. She's got a good fight coming up with what's her nuts. Uh, I can't say, unfortunately, I can't say her name. Man, so I, what, know, I can't what, what's huh? What's that chick she's fighting? Wait, let me I double check. Will be the worst. No, who is I it? know. Let me double. Let me double check because I don't want to say the wrong person. Um, it's one of them uh, Chinese girls or something like that. Yes. She's fighting Yan Xiaonan. Yeah, Yao Nan. Yes. Yan Xiaonan. Yan Yan Xiaonan. Yeah. Xiaonan. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a hell. That's a, that's a tough that's fight. Uh, Jason Pahila. Uh huh. That's Hayson. It's <laughs> not racist. That's that's her name. No, Yan Ken Cook. That was a TV show or whatever. <laughs> no. PBS. No, but look at but no, yeah, no, no, no. But she she she's tough. She's tough. I'm sure. Because they're they, all tough. All those they, girls in the top five, top ten. I mean, they're all, all tough. All Asian girls, because they all know Kung Fu, I guess. Yes, yes, that too. hundred <laughs> percent. 100% it's a, but it's a tough division and, and she's got, you know, but she's looking good. She's definitely looking good. I, 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 I expect big things out of her, you know, and obviously just like Cheeto, Cheeto's, Cheeto's developed quite into quite a good fighter himself. You know, he's also those two, God, I, I mean, but just like Cheeto, I feel like when I, of course I've been watching her for years in the jujitsu scene and you know how, she, how good she is. When I fought, well, even before she learned how to strike, when I saw her first UFC fight, I was like, wow, she she might be really good one day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could just see she's like a heel born fighter, you know? You're talking about Mackenzie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and no, now, she is. You're right. You got a good eye for that because she has good instincts. Yeah. Every, she was a little wild at first, yeah, but, but, that, but she just didn't have the technique. But she had, you could tell she had the, 
the, the wherewithal to just go for it, you know? Yeah. It was better than I even expect. Even though it was wild, I was like, she's probably not going to even know how to throw a fucking punch, you know? And then every fight is like exponentially better and better to the point where I'm like, this chick is going to be a fucking champion one day. Like, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I believe it too. I, I definitely would too. You got yeah. a good eye there. No, good she's got eye. it. She got an it fat. I know. Got the baby brown got eye. <laughs> I have two of that one. Um, but I for heel, she have like the glow. You know, like you see it on people. Yeah. I mean, she don't act like Conor McGregor or something. But you know how when you first saw him, he had like a the glow or whatever. You know, you're like, there's something. The, 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 there's, there. a, there's a charisma to the person. And, and something they, that they, draws they, people to want to see them. Yeah, they, and they believe in themselves, and you you can't buy that, you can't teach that, you know. And yeah. I, they just have that, maybe because of the DNA of a father, Mega Chung, you know. I, I, all I of it, all of it. I mean, she's she been has, competing her whole life. Yeah, that's all she's done. When I asked her, I said, "How many jujitsu competitions do you have?" She goes, oh, "About over a thousand. It's yeah. like, you know, and that's still a thousand times you're going against another person. There's judges watching you." People are yeah. watching you, and your your ego's on the line. Yeah, you, know, so, you know she's a competitor. That's for sure. Special fighter. I remember meeting her at a jujitsu tournament or something. Um, and yeah, she just was so bubbly and just very warm. She just yeah has a very nice, very she's nice sweet. charisma. Like you said, yeah, she's she's very likable. Uh, and so then when you add a likable personality with fighting skills too, then you're like, wow, this is awesome. You know, that's why same with like I'm on the he boss. That's why people love her. Oh, she's right. adorable, bubbly, just likable, and she can scrap. She's ready to throw down. It's it's that same kind of personality that's just like, like undeniable, that. very likable. Yeah. Yeah, very oh, God, oh. Yeah, you gotta be likable in this sport. It really helps. Yeah, you make it, a money, I'll tell you that much. Huh? <laughs> Either likable or really hateable, you know. Some people oh, yeah. are here out of that shit. Yeah. Hey, so yeah. listen, you mentioned you mentioned Cheeto, and I was working that night, and that was only two weeks ago. Uh, that was incredible. You know, Cheeto is somebody who same story, like came into the UFC and like, what was it? He he got here in either 2014 or 15 or whatever, like off of Tough Latin America. Didn't win his first fight, if I remember correctly. You know, he's a guy that uh, at it's not like he just got here and went on a tear. He had a lot of ups and downs and really just kind of matured uh, under our watch, you know? So uh, what's that, what was that like for you guys uh, to beat Dominic? Because obviously that's a huge feather in his cap. And although Cheeto was ranked higher than Dominic already, you know, that's a massive feather in your cap to beat Dominic. Sure. I mean, of course, Dominic and Frankie Edgar and Rob Fawn and, Davy Grant and the, the list, even his tough fight with Josie Aldo, he learned that fight with Josie Aldo really put him into, into a mature place as well. I mean, it kind of capped it off. I, I think that's going to be his last loss for a while because, um, you know, did Cheetos turn the corner? He's got not, he's got 20 UFC fights now. Now, does he? 20? Yeah, 20. That's what I'm saying. He's been here a while. It's just that he, 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 yeah, he, wow. he's been here a minute. Yeah, I think somebody had to care about Cheeto Vera, to be honest. He reached out to me in 2016. I really didn't get, we really didn't connect till probably more closer to 2017, 2018. Wow. Okay. And then, you know, dur during the, the, the pandemic, we spent a lot of time together and I, and I worked with him. He still was working with other coaches that, you know, they had involved, you mm -hmm. know, but, you know, and, and when I, when I, when I came across, uh, uh, Cheeto, he was in there spawn with, you know, TJ Dillashaw and, and you know, uh, what's the kid, the Bellator kid? Uh, oh, um, um, what's his name? Aaron Pico. Uh, my body, my dude. I feel bad that I forget his name right now. He's 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 TJ Dillashaw's best boy. They're always hanging out. He was a champion. Why do I not want? I know who you're talking. Um, I know who you're talking about. Um, not Freddy. Not but not not the Freddy brothers. I know girl, it's all these kids. The guys like that. I know. There's about there's about yeah, four yeah, five, yeah. Or maybe. I was a Cub Swanson might have been in the mix as well, but I, yep. I, I and, I, and I, I wasn't there to see Cheeto, but I was seeing Cheeto, and and even when I watched him spar, spar with these guys periodically, you know, over over months of time, I was thinking to myself, yep. he's been thinking like he's been thinking of himself as a sparring partner. I don't think he's been thinking of that. I mean, I think he's been thinking like I'm going to be, I, I'm I want to be the best one day. But I don't think anybody gave him uh, any type of love really per, per se. What? You know, okay, at the wow. end of the day. 
I don't think I he might maybe he didn't stand out in the room to some people. I don't know what it was, but he continued to to to, uh, to kind of reach out to me. I saw his attitude. I started training him. I watched him win fights. But we, when I watched him lose to Song Young Dong, which I thought he won the fight, and mm -hmm. I wasn't being racist there. When I saw no, him, no. so I've known Song Young Dong for a long time. Yeah, I've known him. That one, but okay. I said the right way, right? No, you totally did. So, so when I thought when I it's neither here nor there, I saw that I said this kid can fucking fight, man. Yeah. I did it. Most importantly, he could take. He could. He's tough. If you're not tough, this is a long road. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's 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 a, it's a next uh, impossible if you don't have some toughness, some real toughness. Yeah. Juan Archuleta is the guy we're thinking of. Oh, Sorry, Juan. Sorry, I know. Juan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He's a no, great he's, dude, too, Juan. He is. He's that. a great yeah. dude. They're all exactly. talented. And I'm not saying those guys were treating him that way. I'm just saying I don't think anybody was paying attention to this. No, kid. but that makes a lot of sense. There was, until, there was until, a time until, in the rough that I don't think a lot of people were paying attention, to be honest. Yeah, until, until and it, I, you know, and it's so interesting because we were talking on the air the other day. Like, I remember telling the story about how he was just fighting and trying to hopefully get a bonus to get his daughter the surgery. So, she, you know, the smile surgery and stuff. And so, you know, Cheeto, like I said, you know, he went from, you know, yeah, at, at that point, just trying to fight and win and get some money and stuff like that. And then maybe even that was part of it back then, that then it turned into, okay, after he achieved certain things, then maybe the other kind of goals and stuff maybe kicked in even. I don't know. But um, but Cheeto looks unstoppable right now. Uh, unstoppable. I mean. Yeah, he believed, and at that point, I think he's always, what's most important, he's always believed in himself, you know, which is really – what you have to have, you know, and yeah. he continues to look for help here and there, whatnot, and still fight away, plug away as he could. But believe in yourself is a huge thing. I mean, yeah. and, and like you were saying early, when you see somebody like McKenzie or somebody come out that actually do believe in themselves, yeah, the crowd can feel it. You can't bullshit it. You can't yeah. fuck it. It, it. It's very organic, and it's just very natural, and it, and it glows up. That's a glow you were talking about. It glows yeah. off the person. Because people try to fake it, and you feel it, Immediately, you just yeah. like nah. They don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah. Right. No, you know when it's you, when you got you're like nah. Uh -uh. Hey, were yeah. you were you were you able to watch? Were you watching Leon and and Kamaru at all, or like were you too busy I, you backstage? Know what? We were uh, yeah. We went to the doctor. Yeah. You know how it is backstage. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Doctors and all that, and we were actually in the car heading back to the house when. uh when I think it was Cheetah or something popped up, and his phone was, oh shit, Leon. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's always, so I it's always. See the whole fight. Yeah, no, it's always tricky. It's always tricky on fight nights and stuff like that. But I mean, like, so he's. Did Luke think before going, like, did he say that to you before this fight? Like, hey, if I lose, I'm done. Or did you kind of, did you kind of feel that way, no. or was it one of those things no, where you feel like it was in the moment? All. If you, I think it was a moment. I think you know he kind of is one of those guys that wear their heart on their sleeve, and yeah. and because of that, you end up getting a bad rap too as well. You know, sometimes you you wear too much of your emotion on your sleeves. But no, he wasn't talking like I. He was talking like he wasn't talking like he was retiring. That that wasn't a conversation that he had with anybody. But I don't think it. I don't think it should be a conversation like, "Hey, this is my last fight." You know, you might as well not go out and do it because yeah. it doesn't sound like you're in the right frame of mind anyways. Sure. I think he was thinking I want to fight for a title. And I do think he was really, that's why, you know, you know, part of, we weren't, you know, I don't think we were 100% ready for this fight. I'll admit that at the end of the day because we weren't able to get in there and spar and do the things we can yeah. do, mm -hmm. you know. But to me, it sounded like that's not something that Luke was going to do regardless, no matter when he got in there. And I, and I feel he's going to get in there no matter what as well. I think he was well reminded of what it was. That's why what fighting is. He was reminded what it's like to feel like it's like to be in that cage with your fucking back scraping against that fence and you got a broken nose and some fucking big motherfuckers cracking in your face. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's 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 feeling all he's feel he, he forgot what that was, you know. Yeah, he, he felt alive again, yeah. He started remembering the week before that, and that probably started making him tired just that as well. I say it all the time to all my fighters. I said, guys lose the week of the fight. They could be in the best shape of their lives, in which they think. And emotionally and mentally, they fucking break the week of the fight, leading up to the fight. The whole emotion, the Tuesday, the posters, the media, the, 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 the press conference, the weigh-ins. 
you know, Karen, it's a fucking, you know, you both know it's a fucking, yeah. it's a, it's a long week yes. of a, a lot of fucking torture. Yeah. And if you're not spinning. Yeah. And you're not, and you're not ready enough. for it. Yeah. It shows up. But what was beautiful is his heart showed up too. And his ball showed up and his True. toughness showed up. You know, I, I, you know, he won the crowd on that fight. And that was, you know, that, <laughs> yeah. that's a special thing. It really is. It's great. He sure did. He won a lot of fans. You know what's funny? You know how you were saying you got grossed up by that uh, Cam Ranch? I did. I was. It was a little much for me. <laughs> it was a little much. I'm not gonna but lie. Let me tell you something. It's funny that you said that because there's a certain kind of girl. There was like a lot of girls I saw. A certain type that was like, oh, that was so fucking hot to watch him <laughs> with the blood. You know that moment? There's a certain type of woman that got. Oh yeah. By that, like, I was like, oh, that was so hot. And I was like, oh, caray, okay. <laughs> hey, listen, Jace, you meant you it's mentioned um you mentioned um uh you know like stopping fighting. So for folks who don't know, like you used to box yourself as well. Like you were you were a fighter too. So um when did you like when did you decide to stop fighting? When did you know coaching was gonna be what you were gonna do? Like how did you even go from one to the other? Well for Fortunately and unfortunately, I have always been kind of coaching. Like that's how I that's how I pay my bills with training fighters. I helped open up a gym called Ellie Boxing back in '92 in Costa Mesa, and we just taught boxing for you know private lessons. I go train at Westminster Boxing Club, and I come back and train people. So I always kind of, which is a blessing and a curse. Ended up probably having a more successful career, career as a coach than I would have been as a fighter, just because I was doing that to sustain my bills. But at the same time. You don't really put as much focus on yourself as you should as a fighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're trying to help these, these people out, but you should, whatever. That's neither here nor there. Right. I actually stopped because I detached my retina and have nerve oh. damage in my left eye. That's why I always got head cocked to the side and I got squinting all the time. Oh, so can I have double vision in this eye? Oh, I, I, I'm sucks. fine, but if I got to cock my head to a certain side so I can see straight. And uh, I probably could have stayed. I could probably try to do the Michael Bisping and continue to keep fighting. But... <laughs> And take your eye out and freak out. Yeah, but, oh, snap. but he's made. But he, he's got. You know, he was making maybe four hundred thousand a fight. And I was making probably four hundred. So I don't think. <laughs> Ooh, it yeah, not worth it. Not worth yeah. it. Maybe you could have did uh, Columbo. Did you ever play Columbo for <laughs> Halloween? <laughs> oh yeah. Thing, <laughs> uh, you know that's like what's his name? Um, Henry Winkler John or whatever his name is at, at Albuquerque. Uh, Oh, Mike Winklejohn, who oh, got yeah. his retina cut by one of the guys, right? Yeah, he got his shit, like a toenail cut that one. And that's when he exactly became, that's that's what made him then. It's almost uh, fortuitous because he became what he is now because he couldn't fight no more, as far as I remember, if I remember correct. I guess the, the eyes take a lot of people out of the game, I think. The eyes yeah. and, the, and knees and other stuff that, you know, you just uh, you need the eyes is the window uh, to the <laughs> phone for her. No. No. That's why you notice my eyes from the beginning. He was mesmerized to that one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Bro. Uh -huh. Hey, so, um, Jason, I think, uh, and I was mentioning to people beforehand, uh, a lot of the people that you've worked with before. So, um, obviously, you know, our boy, Michael Bisping, you were with him when he became champion. And it's, you very famously have the like, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's like the one of the greatest reactions. It you you have so much belief in it. You have so much like, of course, like it's so so so. What was that ten day period like for you guys? Um, you know, I know. Uh, you know, I just I, I love I just I love me some Michael Bisping. Um, but from your end, like to see him get this huge opportunity over Luke. And now it's so, you know, it's kind of great that they befriended each other, but at the same time, it's still a little weird to me because they were arch enemies, you know? Like hockey and fucking, uh, uh, you know, Apollo or whatever, you know, after a while. It's yeah, like, it's, yeah, yeah, hockey and, hockey and Apollo, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, no, that's exactly, I mean, it is. I mean, it was a, that's what made it such an interesting project for me as well, I thought to myself. You know, it, obviously, I, I over the last couple of years, I grew a friendship with Luke Rockhold as well. But, you know, I'm like, fuck, this is like ironic because Luke is still a freak of nature. Like, like, you know, like you were saying earlier, he was even he looked like the better fighter. You know, he's a, he's a freak of an athlete. Me. And you know, that, that fight could have been just, 
realistically, if we had, I wish I had a few more years with Luke Rockhold. I wish he had that in him. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't think I respect him retiring. That's something I think he should do being a 37, but he's nice to have a 34 year old Luke Rockhold, you know, that was able to come out of a three year layoff like that, show up like that against a top five guy, top six guy or whatever it is. I mean, what's the name is a beast. If he shows up like that, he's still got something left in the tank. You know, yeah. he just wasn't ready for a fucking fight. You know, I'm shocked actually, because I, because after I saw that, I go, boy, he still got it. You know what I mean? I was like, forget. Listen, he, his first fight back, and he's in fucking Utah, and he got his nose busted. You know, yeah. he still got the stuffs. You know what I mean? The toughness, yeah. and the technique. And then he, yeah. he, I mean, not quit, but he 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 tried, and I went, ah, that's a fucking shame. Because I was like, I want, I want to see the 2.0, like you know, the second career, like like uh, Aldo or something like that. I, I go, because yeah. he was always like him or hate him, he was always um, such a fucking exciting fighter. It, He's it, entertaining, he not exciting to watch, win, lose, or draw. You know, I That's was at a lot of his fights. Yeah. I was there when with the, I was at the Weidman fight. <laughs> you know, yeah, all of them. Well. Even look at that fight, how exciting it was. The loss was so exciting. He got, you know, they, they weren't chanting his name when he walked in, and they were chanting his name when he left the, the, the auditorium. That's, I mean, to me, when you win the crowd like that, it's a cliche. It's like, what is the movie, Glad, Gladiator, where you win the crowd, you win your freedom or whatnot. Right, you know, right. He, you win the freedom. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. I mean, and that was that, that in a nutshell, you know, and, and I think he got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of lot of positive energy off that fight. Yeah, like he needed more <laughs> punching. You know what I mean? And then after this, it's like, come on, my brother. You know. What? What's that? I said. You, you know, sound jealous, Hinato. I said, well, as if he need more punching. You, you know sound I mean? a little jealous. Oh, punching, punching. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not jealous because listen, I laid down the frame. That might be a, that might be one of the biggest problems Luke's had is all he gets more ass in a toilet seat. I, I mean, the guy's fucking. It. It's like it's like he's. I mean, it's ridiculous. Maybe I mean, slow him down. The hepatitis and the the the, the different stops in there. Oh my yeah. god! Oh my well, god. maybe the, the nose, get his nose busted up, will help out a little bit. Honestly, well, I did yeah. used to hear some stories of how he and DC would mess with each other and kind of like cockblock each other after fight just to like mess with each other and stuff. And like DC, like Luke would be macking on some girl and da da da. And, and then DC would walk and be like, you know, he's never going to call you. Right. You know what I mean? And like, and then DC would be like, and then Luke would get all mad. And I remember asking DC one time, I was like, DC, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I was like, how many girls does Luke have after a fight? I'm like, come on, tell me. And he's like, and I was like, come on, bro. And and like I used to, I mean, I've heard the stories, Jason. I have heard the stories. Well, he's a hot I've dog. seen them. He, I've he, seen the stories. Yeah, I've watched you've lived, yeah. I've lived it. You know, I've seen it. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty wild. But you know what? Even that Lucas, I think, calmed down quite a bit, to be honest. He's he's he that's what I think that's what pushed him in this fight as well. He quit drinking and partying and do all this shit about eating. Yeah, he said he was sober and everything for a while now, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was smoking weed and that type of thing, I'm sure, you know. California sober. But yeah, California sober, exactly. But still, oh. like I said, off the booze is a big thing because that makes you that make is. That makes you make the most choice. The, yeah, the most, the worst choices are made off alcohol, I think, than anything else in the world. Absolutely fucking loot. I mean, if, without question. Yeah, without question. All the right. dumb shit I ever did or any of the you know, a bad fight or a dumb thing with a girl or something. Every dumb thing, of course. A car, you know, car shit. It's all the, it's the worst. Mm. But yep. we, still, we still continue to imbibe. Of course. Because it's wow. fun, too. Yeah. It's mm. fun. It, it is. It fun. is. It's fun making bad decisions. <laughs> it is not, fun not, making <laughs> bad decisions. Bad decisions are a good time. Go Listen, ahead. And I wanted to ask because I forgot when we were talking yeah. about the bunker here, okay? Now... You was doing boxing. Uh, did you ever do kickboxing uh, professionally or no? You know what? I one time did a professional kick. I did like a professional shoe box out in uh, Japan. My my old roommate did uh, work for Zero One Japan, which was like a pro wrestling organization type oh, of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was making, you know, 15 grand a month or something. We're talking back in the, this got to be... Early 2000s, maybe even late 90s, and I had it. 
And I, I threw injuries. I, my career as a boxer wasn't fucking consistent. Obviously, training people would not. But he, he goes, hey, man, that some Russian pulled out of a fight in, in Japan. He, I, he called, they called him on a Monday. We called him back on a Tuesday and said, hey, we'll take the fight. I'll take the fight. For that weekend? We flew out. To, we flew out. I landed oh. in Tokyo, Japan on Friday. Out of shape, mind you. When we took oh. the fight, we were fu- talk about alcohol, bad decisions on alcohol. Ironically enough, we led in this conversation of saying bad choice on alcohol. Me and Amber shit-faced Friday night. And he <laughs> did a lot of matchmaking for him. I'm sorry, uh, Monday night when they called. Anyways, I said, sure, I'll fight the guy. Shoe box. I did do. We fly out there. We land. Fr- we land Friday morning, the day of the weigh-in. Ugh. I go straight from the airport to the weigh-in. Weigh in, make weight. Actually, I, when I made weight, I tried to start a fight with the guy on the scale because I was not. Re- I was nervous. You know, you can tell sometimes it, through that experience. Sometimes I see these guys on the scale and they're acting pretty crazy. I'm going, yeah, he might not be too confident, man, <laughs> because you know, you know, you shouldn't be there. You know, I, I yeah. should have been there, and I didn't. It turns out I'm the main event at Kerrigan Hall. <laughs> There's fucking the guys got maybe sixty shoe box fights. <sighs> Oh, I've never fought. God. I had maybe, I had maybe three professional boxing fights at the time. Oh no! And fucking yeah, it wasn't a pretty night. I got my, I got my idea. I was running these tie shirts. We bought these tie shorts from like a Seven Eleven out in fucking <laughs> Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty ugly. Oh, that's crazy. I, I, well, they, they, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I don't. Want I to couldn't go. walk for a month. That motherfucker kicked me so hard in my legs, dude. I oh. couldn't fucking. I couldn't. I, Put it this way, the next morning, I went to Denny's. We walked to Denny's, which was a block away. I said, we got to get a cab back. It was one block away. I said, I got to get a cab. There's no way I could fucking walk back. That sucks. But it was a, you know, it was a stupid experience, but it was an experience, you know, at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, it's funny for the books now. You, now you can be on this prestigious show here talking about this. <laughs> You're going to have a second career because of this one. Yeah, um, exactly. But the reason why I ask this is because um, you seem to have, not everybody can figure out, not every boxing trainer can figure out boxing for MMA. And you sure. see that, that shit dialed in because you can't, Cheeto is a perfect example. There's certain stuff you can, you can get away with in boxing that you can't get away with in anything where you're throwing kicks as well. And how he finished um, um, uh, Cruz was a prime example of that one. Because you can see, it, 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 like, for instance, Freddie Hoach, one of the best fucking coach. Boxing, in- wild card boxing, yeah. There would be a learning curve if he was training a guy for a UFC fight because he would have to know, oh, well, this might get you taken down or this might get you kicked in yep. the fucking head or this, you know what I'm saying? So Yes. Is how did that come about where you was able to really understand every single aspect having not did that yourself? Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's good a good question. question. That's a good that question. And ironically, no, I was really around MMA when it's like when it was no holds bar, I yeah. was around it. And I mean, my, 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 my friends down here were fighting in the very early no holds bar fight. My buddy Sean McCulley, who, who opened up that. Oh, Boxing yeah. gym I talked about yeah. in 1992. He was one of the first guys to fight. He fought Eric Paulson in that bare knuckle no holds Oh, fight. Are you? imagine that. Eric Paulson. That's a big boy for, for that. Yeah, he's a big, big yeah, he boy. Was a, he was a kid at the time when he fought him as well. You know, you're 23. I think Eric was 30. He was like a, you know, a, a pancreas champion out in Japan. So, oh. you know, but regardless... I was around. I mean, all these early fights. I mean, Tank Abbott used to box with my boxing coach at oh, in West Minnesota. Remember Dave Abbott, you know. But I just being around it and being around kickboxing. I did kickbox a little bit when I was younger, and I just have always been around it. And I've always kind of helped these guys a little bit while I was trying to do the boxing thing myself. And yeah. it just, I think, made it more of a natural, uh, you know, progress, you know, you know, transfer over because I mean, I get it. You can't. I mean, a typical boxer, you're going to be on an angle. You know, you're vulnerable to leg kicks. There's a lot of yeah. stuff that that you, that you are vulnerable to, uh, you know, if you're in a traditional boxing stance and trying to act like a traditional boxer. But And I probably try to fight a little bit more, too, when I box. What made it my style, I guess, as a, as a boxer, more of a fighter, if that makes sense. So you, you were know, thinking I, about it in terms of, like, a street fight instead of just for boxing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Because exactly. you're on the beach and you had to get into some scraps probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where did you where did you where where did you grow up? I grew up in the city in Orange in Costa Mesa as well. Orange and Costa Mesa, which is right by Huntington Beach. I, the first two, the first two times I went to Huntington Beach, I got thrown in jail. That makes you feel better, both for fighting. Huntington, you know, so that fucking vibe. You. As soon as I go there, I feel the electricity. The guys want to fight you. Even those brawls, that, like they look like surfers. No, what the fuck is up, dude? You know, like. <laughs> fuck you, well, bro, I was gonna bro. say that's one of the people that you worked with, though. The Huntington Beach Bat Boy yeah. was Tito. Oh, is Tito, one of the. Tito. Yeah. One of the guys that you work with, yes. Yeah, so like, I don't, I don't know how long was it that you work with Tito? Because I, I feel like you know, you, I don't know. Uh, Ryan yeah, Bader, I don't know. I, I, I've actually worked with T Tito for many. I've just known Tito for many years, and used to and used to mess around here and there with him on the hand pass. But it wasn't we took each other serious as I'm, tr I'm his coach till he wow. fought Ryan Bader okay. back in 2000. Was it 12, 11, something like that? And uh, yeah, he, he was coming out of the grave. You know, because he had hadn't won a fight in six years prior yeah. to that yeah. fight. You know, yeah. he so was when like, he won that fight, it was a you know yeah. that 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 gave us a pretty good connection. And he went on and he went on to have a winning, uh, a favorable career from there. Fought for the Bellator title. You know, beat some decent names, Sonin and Rich. You know, these old the guys his age too yeah. as well, a little younger. Right. Were you the one who told him? He said that his coach made him put like walk around with a fucking tennis ball, like. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think I told him to do that. <laughs> I worked that night though. I worked that fight when Tito beat Vader. I I remember that's working it, that because I remember that's when I met you. Yeah, yeah. we I, we met yeah. then, and then and and I remember too us running around Philly, and like when it, at UFC one thirty three, uh, who was not it? sober, <laughs> like just well, running, no. running. Running around Philly, it's like one of those things. Where it's like I have great memories of Jason Perillo, and one of my memories are of not really remembering everything of hanging yeah, out with Jason Perillo, but having a great time hanging out with Jason Perillo. That's most people's memories with me. I think is not remembering it, but <laughs> we were definitely but laughing. Is, I, think. But I think so. I was just gonna say, I think that's what your vibe is, which is such a great vibe. Like you're a guy that. And you have such a positive energy. Like I feel that way that there's a, there's, there's certain coaches that I meet sometimes. I'm like, I wish this dude would coach me in life. Like I, I want, I want him to coach me for something, but like, I feel, I feel that way around you. Like, I feel like you could inspire me to do some stuff. Like I, I might, I might call you sometime and be like, Jace, like life coach me for a day yeah. or something. I don't know. But like, do you, I, because not everybody can do that. Right. So when did you sort of discover that, you actually can motivate somebody else, right? Because a lot of people might have good ideas about knowing things, but they don't have the vessel. They don't have the ability to part, you know, to impart that to somebody else. Like, when did you figure out you could actually do that? I think it's kind of an intuitive, uh, it's kind of a, 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 just something that, you see, I think it's kind of a natural thing people do, to be honest, just how you relate to people. Yeah. You know, I, I think so. I, I think probably also training people from the time I was eight years old. You, yeah. you train to people if you're not training, if they're not, you're not training for a fight. Every for some reason in the gym when people start sweating, that's when their 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 emotions come to the surface. Also, they're fucking telling you about their their girlfriend or their boyfriend. And now you're fucking a goddamn therapist. You yeah. know what I mean at the end of the day. So, but I mean, I guess that might not be the most. A place that you're looking I probably for, need I a therapist too, Jason. I probably need a therapist. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, being a therapist is motivating, but also just kind of, I think just having a, a, an innate ability to kind of do it. My, it helps. My father was a professional motivator. He was a motivator, spe motivational speaker. So that probably oh. fucking oh. has a little well, bit. Well, then of there a, you go. Yeah. There, there could be a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, 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 a you know, crossover with that. But I. Really, I, I, I think it's always training people for so long as well. It's just kind of always talking to people, learning the way people think, and, and trying to help them out that way, you know? Well, fun stuff. Okay, I, I, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. I, I, I read that you, that you, um, that even though you grew up in uh, Orange County, you originally from New York. Yep. What part of New York? Upstate New York, Schenectady, oh, well, New York. Oh, I always okay. So I I lived in for many years in New York, and when I would go on the train, uh, some Chinese I don't even know where the fuck we was going, but you would pass 
And we would always laugh for some reason. Going, the guy going, Schenectady. Well, the spelling is like insane, <laughs> yeah. the way it's spelled. It's yeah. crazy. And I isn't it, how far is that from Arsening? I, I, I sing, sing, you know, was, was that past or? From where? Arsening, New York. Arsening is the, the prison. You know, Arsening. Sing, oh, oh Arsening. So you them very long, no? I don't know. I'm oh. having a hard time. I, I, I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> oh, God, there's a prison. There's a town called Oh, Austin. the prison. Yeah, Sing Sing in Austin, Sing Sing, New York. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know exactly. I guess. Well, anyway, I feel like it was the same train when you would see Austin, Sing Sing, and then you would also see Schenectady. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. They probably want a prison pretty close to Schenectady. Oh, uh, scary fucking place. Um, but yeah, so when did you, how old were you when you moved from there? I was like, I was, I was a, I was a baby. I was six. I, 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 I spent my summers in New York till I was about thirteen, and then once I, once I was old enough to do what I wanted to do, I don't think I went back to New York very much, from what yeah. I remember. Connected, he's not like fucking New York. I mean, Manhattan. No. This guy, it's, Ricky, Ricky J Sports. <laughs> Every time I say Jason Perillo. I want to sing his name like Jason Derulo. Ever, ever, there's, there's so many people that have said that to me. About Jason Derulo? Jason Derulo. I know, I get that. <laughs> that's uh, actually funny to me. Sorry, that's stupid, but funny I, to me. Uh, like um, the, New York, originally. I the club, yeah, he's like the club DJ and stuff like that. Yeah, I, for I, sure. Puerto Rican? You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't sure. I asked Cheeky. And he said, no, I think he's just a white guy or whatever. Tiki. Or I said, what, is, what ethnicity is this guy? Well, Perillo, that makes me think Italian. It is. It I'm, is. Half, I'm half Italian, half Irish. My mother's Irish. My dad's Italian. I grew up <laughs> both, both from New York, both racist towards one another. Yeah. It was definitely an interesting way to grow up. So who do you like on Goodfellas then? Who's your, who's your favorite oh, Goodfellas? Because yeah. Jimmy's a, he's, he's Irish. You know what I mean? So you gotta like him at the same half. time. Like, yeah, he's like him. He's half and half. Yeah, Jimmy. He's but half that's Irish. Half never be made for, huh? Yeah, he can't be a main man. Yeah, it was heel grease ball shit. It was among the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gone. That's he's right. Gone. We lost yeah. him. Well, we had a little problem. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Yeah. Don't 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 let us go down a, a good fellas. Uh... If you get us started talking about fucking good fellas, it, it that that all <laughs> we talk about for the rest of the fucking show. Totally, totally. Yeah. So, Jason, who's up next for you? I mentioned uh, McKenzie. McKenzie fighting October first, but do you have anybody on the Paris card? No. No, no. Paris okay. would be Paris would be bad. I'm not a big fan of traveling anything over five hours, but Paris would be interesting. That's I'm going sure. and I can't wait. I leave a week from tonight. So by the way, Hanato, and by the way, everybody listening, uh, next week's Tuesday night festivities are probably going to have to be Monday night festivities because your girl KB is going to be on a plane on her way to Paris. She loves you. Watch out, boys. Awesome. Watch out. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Jason, go- I'm still very, very, very single. So your girl likes to travel. So how's have you been? Uh, you know, getting a little no, no, Nothing. Jason, none. Like no, it's pathetic. Who do you know? Why? I need a date. Like it's pathetic. You have all the ability in the world. You have. You're beautiful. I mean, what's the problem? You just you intimidate them. Is that what it is? You intimidate I them. No, I wish I knew. The, I I'm what? What am I looking for? Somebody that can make uh, making me laugh would be helpful, and then. Just like, just, just, just somebody who would like to like take me out to dinner or, or make dinner for me. Or like, I, I really don't think I asked for much. Like just somebody cool to hang out with that like literally can make me laugh. Cause like my job is to like, I'm always working and entertaining other people. Like I would like to not have to entertain for a minute. Like I would like somebody to make me laugh. You don't get asked out ever? Ever, Jason, ever. I've literally not had a single date since my divorce. Like not a single date. She doesn't know where her bread is butter. You know, um, she 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 think like sometimes she worried about her thighs or whatever her case. <laughs> and then the thing is, it's like that's the shit we like. You're right. She, oh, she, you're, you're, 
You know, I've been advertising. I'll advertise. I advertise. Ask Karen. I fucking. You should be getting dick all day long. Thank you, Jason. I would thank you. I agree. I don't understand what's happening. Try to tell her this. Jason, Jason. Um, she. Okay, she having a big booty, a nice big ass and and thighs is equivalent of walking in the home with big chit, big perfect big chitties. Big naturals. Chitties, now those women sure. walk in there with a, a supreme confidence because they know people that's this currency there, big natural chitties. But some <laughs> Chinese girls with a big fucking chitties and an hourglass, I mean big uh cakes, is like, oh I'm too fat. Oh, I don't got too thick thighs. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That this is what we want. This is exact precisely what we want. Maron. Maron. You know? God yeah. Sakes. You want, I, to, you, I want, would... you want a good cushion in front of you. Oh, you don't want to bruise your pe- Nothing worse than bruise your pe- The butt bone comes down and bruise uh, the top of your fucking pelvis. Yeah. Not good. It's like one of those Not things. Good. What's the psoas thing? The saw height or whatever where you put that, you know, to heal your psoas. I don't want that. Take Leave my psoas alone, poha. Yeah, poha. Poha. Well, yeah. So I, I, I admit to... Perhaps not being as confident as I should be, but uh, I don't know. I could. Why don't really you ask think. a guy out? You should ask a guy out. It's a it's a day and age where you should be able to do that. Okay, but see, but that okay. So I okay okay. So I I do I haven't okay. Part of it is I haven't seen anybody that I wanted necessarily, but then also Jay, that triggers. Now you're triggering a lot of stuff from like when I was younger, and I used to ask boys out, and they would always turn me down. So now I'm like. Quite reluctant, and I know those are old memories, and I need to like let that go. I get can I, that. Can I explain him to why? Why though? See, you gotta realize this, uh, uh, pa- Pariello. Um, she she went to like a um an all white like um in in like uh New what was it New Hampshire or some shit? New England. Oh, yeah. I grew up New in New England, England. Yeah, where they all doing crew and all this kind of bullshit. Uh, she wasn't. Like, that's are like, you were like you know. were. You were, you I was the only one better. like this. I was the only one who looked like this in my whole entire town. Yeah, and that wasn't your target. So I had no dates. So they any date I attempted to get was me asking, and they always turned me down. So I have a very bad... Life. I would think that you'd be a hot commodity because you'd be like a nice little flavor going around the school. No, not back... No. But sometimes there's people like there's certain There's certain places where my, my suaviness... Is a is a is it work in my favor? And then sometimes you have people who's just it's not their bag, you know, or they have some kind of thing in their family, like my own. If I brought home, a, hey, believe home. me, I've gone to places with the way I look and weren't really welcome to as well, especially in the boxing world. I bet a couple of gyms that I was looked at, like, <laughs> hey, let's beat this white boy up all day long. I bet <laughs> you'd be surprised. I think uh, white guys is sometimes surprised. Because they never try, because they're kind of scared of black women. Some Chinese those black women will, will will would be interested if you if they knew you was interested. Black women are beautiful, man. I'm telling you. I, I think, oh, oh, I Jason, I think you would do very well yeah. with the sisters. Like I think Jason would have no problem with the sisters. I think me and the sisters are 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 are, are one of a kind. We're, we're two peas in a pod. I think you the speak sisters. their language. Yeah, I don't oh, see yeah. any issues with you and the sisters at all. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Nothing but love for the sisters. That's for sure. But you know, the thing is, it's like um, it it it, it depends on what you want. Like when I get single, all I want is just to have you some fun, you know. And and I'm not looking like the person who I may have to have sex with is gonna be my soul my life partner or whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah, like, a, man does, a man doesn't have to have any emotional connection to fuck. And that's a problem. A man could hate a woman and uh, fuck her. Ah, uh, yes. Now, now a woman, yeah. she can't do that. They're not built like, I mean, they're not built like that. So it makes no. it a very difficult thing. So you want somebody to ask, you want to connect with somebody that wants to connect with you. And that's a whole different fucking animal. You know, because I mean, it's not animals, it's the way a woman thinks it. I mean, because you're healthy. It's a healthy way of thinking. You're like, oh, I want this guy to warm me. I don't want to ask a guy out and then him say, yeah, I'll go out with you. And you think, does he really want to go out with me? I don't know if he wants to go out with me because fucking usually when I ask guys out, they say no. But maybe you just try to be nice and saying he wants to go out with me. And then you start mind fucking yourself and overthinking. Yeah. And then it yeah. makes it. 
And then the date, it dates not even ends up being a shitty date probably at the end of the day. When yeah, because it's... if somebody asks you out, you're like, this motherfucker wants to take me out. He just asked me out. You know, so that makes it a lot I more. Find this. I That's close. what I'm seeing. And and me being such a alpha woman in so much of alpha. my life, Jason is like, oh, I want an equal alpha, mm-hmm. and that's very hard to find because I am like literally because I am very much of a like go for what I want kind of person. Like it, literally, when it comes down to that point, like that's like at that point where I'm like, okay, I'm tired of being so alpha. Like now I, now I really would love an alpha dude to come along right now. Like, and where are you? But then all the, 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 you get an alpha guy that wants to bait a girl. He wants to submit some chick a lot of times. I right. Mean, and so I'm too, and I know, know that I'm too alpha. Personality that wants to compete with their girlfriend in the, in the room. Right. That's what makes it tough. But I'm not cool. competitive like that. I'm not that kind of like, I don't need to win everything. I'm just saying, but like, I am a, I'm an alpha chick in that, like, I run stuff and I go for my, I go, I, I'm very uh, goal oriented and, you know, success or like I'm going yeah, you're for probably, my you're own. You probably intimidate a lot of guys. We have that personality. You're beautiful. You got your mm-hmm. outgoing, you're funny. you got a good personality. You got, you're smart. You know, you have all these things going for you. You know, sometimes it's not a, you know, guys aren't, you know, guys might be taken. The guys that, guys that actually fucking aren't intimidated by that, you know, might be alpha guys yourselves as well, but then they also, it, it makes it a hard, the energy doesn't connect a lot of times. Yeah. Well, right? the problem is you're going to have a guy like me who's dynamic and attractive <laughs> and smart and funny and stuff like that, but then I'm going to want to make love to you, but then I'm also going to be a free bird. I'm going to fly the coop, and that's not what you want. You understand? Yeah, I'm not trying to. to I'm, I'm not trying to get married again, but I'm. But I wouldn't mind like a. Yeah, like I, 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 like here's the thing, Jason. Because clearly, like you know, most girls know. Once you get to a certain age, most girls know we can go out and have our fun. Like it's up to us. That's the thing. You get to a certain age and you realize, wait a minute, I'm in control. Like so, literally, most girls can go out right now, and if they want to go have some fun, the girl can just walk into any bar and go up to a dude and be like, "Hey, you want to go?" And most guys will be like, "Yeah, I want to go," and they can go. Right. So it's not about that. It's more about yeah, like wanting somebody cool to hang out with. You know what I mean? It's more like that. Of course. That's yeah. I class problems for, for guys like me and him, you know, we're just trying to get some, you know, some fun. And then that's secondary. <laughs> like, hopefully she's cool. But if she's not, well, say la vie for her. Say la vie. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. I guess. So, well, whatever. Anyway, it's not about, you know. You back, back to this shit about how he said we could fuck somebody we hate. I was like, oh, yeah, back to that. Yeah. No, we was a friend of mine the other day. We was talking about that dynamic, and we were saying how different men and women is with that. We was like, if we was Jews back in like the Nazi Germany, we could probably fuck a Nazi. You know what I'm saying? Like it don't, it don't. You 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 could fuck somebody joy- that you absolutely think he's a horrible person. Joy division. I'm just That's I'm just saying. It, it, it's, there's something about it. It's it's. Hey, hey, it's, it's, it's this right here. Am I right or wrong? It's as simple as this. Stiff cock has no conscience. A stiff cock has no conscience. It's not yeah. thinking about fucking anything. It's just thinking about going where it needs to go. And it's, then like it's, a shark. A shark. Huh? it's like a shark. It's like a shark. A shark. When Joao's, we just talked about Joao's last, last uh, week. We when Joao gets you, he's got cold, lifeless eyes, like a doll's eye. <laughs> And he's not th- get personal about, oh, I wonder what this person's feeling or whatever. He just go in there and got out you. I mean. No, yeah. It's true, though. That is true as well. So I can't argue with that. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't. I can't argue with that. You want some type of connection with a guy if you're going to go out with him. You want to be like, okay, I really want to go with this guy. I, I you mean, know, I, yeah. You want Look to be romantic. That, this is a, a, a girl. Girls love to go out. We love to go out and, and have our fun as much as the next time. Don't, please don't, please don't, don't hear me. And don't make this out that I'm saying girls can't just go out and, and just have fun and like not think about it. That, that, that can't happen. I'm just saying, um, yeah, like I would, I would prefer to, to actually like care for the person. Mm. And like, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Wow. Mm. 
Hmm. That's weird, man. Well, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry to be a girl. I think okay to to make it. I think for us, um, like for instance, uh, you could use an analogy like food or movies. Okay, Mo let's say movies. Okay, of course we like to sit and watch a movie like a Shawshank Redemption or something that can bring a cheer to your eyes, and you 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 discuss that one afterwards, and you go, God, are you? You know when that. But sometimes we also can watch a film that is like a B a Z level movie and it's a piece of shit and it's just horrible and you like it just because it's fucking hilarious and it, it, you're liking it for a different reason. It's still good, but the quality is not good and you don't you're not emotionally invested in it. But it was fun. It was yeah. fun to watch. <laughs> you know, and we don't I look do at know sex as one thing just like we don't look at film as one thing or food as one thing it can be filet mignon or it can be fucking cheese doodles it's still food right. i guess it's just that whenever i've had fast food yeah i go okay that was all right but like i much prefer the sit down meal yeah but you enjoyed it while you was eating that fucking greasy hamburger <laughs> That's true. You Sometimes know, you, that greasy so, hamburger is special. Yeah, as long. Okay, how about this? Like, as like if if food poisoning was uh, venereal disease, as long as you didn't got food poisoning from it, <laughs> you're good. Yeah, they, all these are very valid, valid points. These are very. There's something to think about, Karen. It I really think is so. because something like consider, uh, um Karen Branch, life moves fast. It goes so quick. And one day, let's face it, me, I'm going to go for a long time. But some of the two of you guys, at some point, you're going to be on a track. Okay? <laughs> I mean, or you're going to be like good looking for a 90-year-old or whatever. My time, my time is just short. It's and, running and, out. And guess what? At that point, you're really not going to, your, your options is going to be really narrowed down or whatever. Okay, okay. okay. So while we're alive, eh? Why not enjoy? enjoy? Enjoy that one. Why not on a daily basis enjoy life? -y? You're right. I don't know. Well, I call uh, me crazy for her. On, on that note, Jason, I believe the bars are still open. <laughs> <laughs> the single bar, the Eagle Beagle is going to go. The Regal Beagle is still open. Are you still um, saying? Parillo, not you. We know about me? you. Me? No. Oh, no, God. I'm not. I'm not single. So you're just, uh, wow. Well, what's worse? Hard situation for you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you're, hey, so you're right. Hey, listen, you're right. I, I wasn't planning on ever. I mean, that's what happens. Though. You end up getting in relationships, you know. Yeah. You, you, you find some people. But it's probably, it, it, it's it's always a more peaceful way to be single. But I, I fortunately lucked out. You know, I got a good girl. Cool. It's oh, cool. more peaceful. <laughs> no, okay. I'm sure you do. No, listen. It honestly, is. I mean, like, no, you got you got another person to worry about all the time. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough situation, no matter what. But it's but good. I would, it's fun. I would imagine your your girl would be pretty cool. Like by definition, uh, a girl that's with you would be cool. Like I'm sure I would get on with your girl. Me has to be cool. That's what I'm, I'm a, sure I would get out with your girl. I'm actually on my best behavior right now. We're sitting there. I haven't drank nothing today. I'm not saying anything too off the wall, but I fucking, I, I, I say some very crass things. Stuff that comes out of my mouth is not in it. A girl that has that, that can hang with me. That's what I mean. That's why I end up always having girlfriends because I get this girl that sits there and just continues to laugh and hangs in there. I go, well, fuck. If you can stomach this, then you know what? <laughs> That's a huge You're all right. Fun. That's a huge piece of the puzzle. But he's right when he said the peace thing. You know, I, that, that's one thing. I that's one thing that keep me single because I realize that yeah, loneliness sometimes. You know, in, in single. No matter if you do good with the ladies or not, sometimes you're gonna feel lonely. You know, yeah. and you're gonna feel 100%. like, and you go through a fucking maybe some shitty stuffs in your life, and you don't have that person to hold you and caress you and say you're the best or whatever. <laughs> but but there's also no peace in the other one and so I, I i was like which one do i can i live and i decided i can check the loneliness more than i can take the no peace and that's just me you know no that's 
You ever see Independence Day, uh, Perillo? You ever seen that one? Independence yeah, it's been a long... I honestly don't even remember. I've seen it. Well, there's a part where they're trying to he's in with... You know, they finally make it so that the thing can... They, they do a translation thing so the thing can, they can hear what he's... The alien that they have trapped. Uh, right. And then they say, you know, we want to be... We want to be, you know, peaceful with you and your people and stuff. And the alien go, no peace. Or whatever, you know, and he's oh, like, yeah, yeah. The female is like that, like everything, going, <laughs> every stuff is going nice, and I'm like, oh, God, you? What can I do? Everything, everything you want to watch this, and then it's like, no peace, boy, huh? no peace. Yeah, no matter what, what there's always gonna... one problem, always, I always that... want a problem, and, and that's yeah. the truth. You got to be able to deal with that. See, for me, I got, you know, I don't, yeah, I guess it's it's a give and take for me. I got. I need somebody to. Help. I need somebody to take care of me because I'm. I, I. I don't function very well in my. I just. I could. I could focus on my fighters and what I yeah. do and everything else in my life. I have to have somebody to take care. I, I bet care you're actually a sweetheart, and I bet you're a sweetheart, and but and I can see that. Yes, I. I think you probably have a really cool chick who takes good care of you just as well as you take. Care my of chick wants to fight. She wants to be a fighter for God's sake. Oh, she she okay. trains. She she spars with Mackenzie. All the time, she's oh shit, she's, yeah, she's not bad okay. too. She, All right, she's a, nice. She's a four. I don't know. If we, we'll see. She will. She'll, we'll get her fighting. I don't know what, what level she'll get, but she definitely. Wow. Wants to well, nice. okay, and see if she liked the shit. You know. Yeah. Nice. 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 Well, listen, um, Jason, I'm really excited that you could join us today, and um, you know, I know you have just so many stories. Look at folks. Just if you're not already following Jace on social, on uh, his Instagram and stuff, you should, because he's training with a lot of the cool people and you can see a lot of the great insight and everything there. But um, we will see you in a, wait, you say your next fight is who? Uh, McKenzie Durr. She's oh, it is McKenzie. Okay, so October 1st. October yep. 1st. I have to say, uh, we have some friend in common, you know, and whenever your name he comes up, it's like, Oh man, the greatest guy or whatever. You Everybody know? loves Jason. Brown. Like first thing, cheeky. Uh, when I, you know, because I just wanted to know a couple stuff that's not cheeky. in the cheeky. And like, oh man, he is awesome. You know, he was like, ah, oh, he's awesome. You know what I mean? Like that's the first stuff. I didn't ask if he was. I didn't. It was like as if I said, hey, is this guy gonna be okay? He's gonna be cool or not? I didn't even ask that. I just said, oh, I'm doing an interview with him. He's like, oh, you're gonna love him. He's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you, that's nice. Tiki's a good dude. <laughs> Not everybody, if across the board, you know, because I know Shaq Congo, I know you know Bisping, all these people, Mackenzie. Everybody is always saying good stuff about you, like you know, right off the bat, and not you can't say that about everybody in MMA and because <laughs> totally. there's a lot of jerks. Yeah. So that yeah, that, I, that, hey, that tell me something. Thank you so much for that. I mean, yeah. for, t for, for well, telling me, I figure everyone thinks I'm an asshole. So hey, you is the least I can do. You know. One legend to another, Poha. Yeah, Poha. Poha. And you never got Poha. to train me in my prime because I was doing a lot of full contact capoeira. I had my own system. I didn't want to monkey around with that one, but you know, yeah. who knows where we could have went with this? With, yeah, with the physique. I wish I got a hold of you in your th when you were thirty-four. Well, carajo, I'm not even. Well. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Um, hey. I will see you on October 1st uh, if I don't see you beforehand around town or just whatever. But thank you so much for joining us today. Do you know where and, that fight's uh, at? Where's that fight? Should, I think so far that one's scheduled at the Apex, unless it's just TBD. I did get word about one of the ones in December now that's going to be in Florida. But uh, I right now, I think October 1st is Apex. Uh, I know it's Vegas, until, but I didn't know if it might be in front of a crowd, but obviously not. Yeah, probably Apex. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, yeah. I appreciate being on the show, man. All right, yeah, Jace. No, great to see you. And right more on. success. You got a couple champions on your hands, my brother. I can't wait to see that stuff. It's material. Absolutely. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. See All you right. later, Jace. Bye. Ciao. 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 I mean. He was great. He was he's easy, a cool easy. dude. Yeah, he's very cool. He's very I... cool, and he's been there and did that, and he's sharp, you know, like, um, I can tell.
you know, sometimes I sneak in a zinger. Like, I, I try to throw in a zinger under the head. This off, guy, but... he's like good zing in there, Varela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a good But zing. you know what I'm saying? He 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 gets, he, he, you can see he had just start every, he don't miss nothing. No, he's see, really he, cool. He don't say anything about it. He's, you can see he, he catch every stuff. Yeah, say yeah. That about it either. Yeah, yeah. No, like I said, I remember working, yeah, when Tito and Ryan fought. I remember working that and talking to Ryan after that and talking to Tito after. But we, yeah, Jason, when we were running around Philly at UFC 133 when Tito and Sugar were fighting, Rashad. And, uh, but I'd met Jason and we were running around and I mean, silly and just, out of it and think whatever but like i just i have such good fond memories of him of just like always being a good dude yeah yeah nothing but good I'm, memories with jason i'm surprised i never hung out with that guy before yeah That's i'm the, surprised the, too just because we do it especially out here on the west coast it's a small world I like if you had because i seen him so many times just because of like on tv and that stuff and then i know people so my mind almost create that I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Well, there are a lot of people like that. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know them, but you don't know them, but we do, yeah. but we don't, you know what I mean? It's and like, yeah, it's like, like sometimes I don't think I know somebody and then they go, don't you remember? We was at this thing together and we, we shared a lot and I go, Oh God, I yo, how <laughs> forget that. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm, I'm always, my mind's always playing tricks on me about that stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, at least, uh, yeah, it is kind of funny. Like, I'm just trying to laugh of like, remember, like, oh, do you remember that you did this? Like, do you remember that you get a lot of girls that come up to you and say that to you? Of like, do you do you remember? Uh -huh. Like, does that happen a lot? Because I kind of feel like it. I kind of feel like it probably does. I tell you what um, does happen is somebody. I do get maybe contact by a female like on a Facebook or something like that. And then I go, oh, shit. If she didn't contact, I would have forgot about that for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? I go, oh, that's hype. Oh, God. And then I feel good. I go, that's another one. Huh? That's oh. another one in the books. It's like it's like the reverse of you guys, you know, like you, you want the lower numbers or whatever. But us, we go, oh, that's hype. That's go, that's go to my legacy for her. You, you know, like yeah, you Irish guys want the high Philly. numbers, right? What was that? You guys want the high numbers? Uh, maybe not when you're selling yourself to a female or whatever, but amongst each other. Like for instance, when Will Chamberlain said he fucked like a uh, two hundred and fifty thousand women, whatever the fuck it was, man was like, first of all, it's like you're lying, but we wasn't. You're like, definitely lying. We, but we wasn't like. You disgust me or whatever. We was like, fuck. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're you're, you're, well, okay. We're not. Let's put it this way. When you have this with a bunch of men, when you have this about it, inevitably, if you're talking about Prince or you're talking about some guy in his primary, like John Namath. Let's say John Namath. If you yep. we was to see a thing of him and it was like a tribute to John Namath, then you go, God, I, the old days when he was in his prime and he's walking around with like the white fur coat or whatever. Inevitably, we don't go. Can you imagine how much fun it was playing football at that time? What it always devolved into is, can you imagine the amount of pussy that guy was getting? I'm just saying, he, he, and I'm not trying to be a pig or whatever. Yeah, it's just where your brain goes. But it's, guys, if you see like, if you, you're talking about Motley Crue or you're talking about Elvis or any stuff, if, if it's a room full of guys or it's two guys, inevitably you're going to go. I can respect that. Imagine the quality, the pussy that he was getting. You know, like he, he, having that serious thought, you're like, God, are you? you know what I mean? And it's, not, and, and it's like you wish that you could, as much as you're getting, you, you go, what would it be? Just like, it's, you know what it's like? Listen, if you, if you had a million dollars in your bank account, okay? Uh -huh. Or let's say if you have five million in your bank account. Even though you're okay and everything is going nice here, you hear about somebody selling a check company for fifty billion dollar or whatever. You wonder, you go, "Why? Right, that would be interesting to know what that's like to have that much fucking money." You know what I'm saying? 
So it's even like though that, it's like that in the Punchang, you're like, yeah, it's nice. What I've I've had a nice life. I've been blessed. But can you imagine to the just the gaudiness, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, at like, um, let's say, um, what's that, the, the Cannes Film Festival or something like that? Like, what would it be like to, to just jump in his shoes for like one day in a situation like a Cannes Film Festival or something like that, you know? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess. And I would imagine in some of these people get into positions where they have the ability to like turn it down. Like, what would it take for you to turn it down? Well, in, at that point, it would be, imagine that, like, what would it take? I would imagine that the flip side problem is true. You probably could get, if you're Leonardo uh, DiCaprio, and you're in, let's say, like Ken, and you're just promoting uh, Titanic or whatever, he's that age. The, the amount of women that's available to you, let's say he's at this oh. first party, he's at the first party of the evening, and this in, incredibly attractive girl come up, okay? And he know it's on if I want this one. But then, in the, the a lot of other ones swimming around in the in the party, and you right. go, if I do this, what if I he grabbed that as I'm walking out, and I see that one? Oh God, are you? Should I pull the trigger? And then imagine you do that the whole night, and then you're like, fuck, fuck. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> maybe you have. That's why they say go ugly early, so you guaranteed yeah. something. You but, know, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. And I'm sure, listen, I'm sure even myself, it can be exhaust. But I can imagine, just like with anything, the, the newness of that power probably wear off after a while. You probably go, wow. whole hum, I can get any. And I think that's why people, he's right to crazy drugs and, and you yeah, know. Yeah, I just know, well, can, girls, can, we, don't, we don't like being rejected. It doesn't make us feel good. Who said anything about hijack hijacking you for him? Well, you just said he's going to go through and realize some he of them. He's gonna... I don't know. I, mm -hmm. Or he may go through with it and then think, oh, but I could have had that one. And then that takes the fun out of it. Because out of the one that you have. Yeah. And it, it's like a mind fuck, you know? Yeah. It's about the only kind I'm getting these days. Anyway. Fine. um, Well. Listen, it's you. It's your philosophy that is 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 uh, the problem, kind of. I don't think so. I think so. You just said it. You don't want to have. You don't want to have unbridled, no strings attached. Well, it's that. That's not what I'm looking for. Exactly. So you're looking for something special. Well, no, I'm looking for something. I, I'm not looking for something special i'm just looking for something more than a, a one night lay like why why i didn't say this person has to be like the second coming of freaking whatever like i just want somebody cool to go out with i didn't i don't i just want somebody cool to date i you just want, but you wanted to build to something you you, you no you i don't to, want to get married again i don't, you, i just want somebody know. who's not an asshole that i can go out with on some dates like who's but like you, you want well, to be do done. some nice shit for me? Can somebody do some nice shit for me? Would you be willing? How's to that? And who 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 also who who don't want to be tied down, but he likes to see you every once in a while? I don't need it every day. I don't need to see you every day. Yeah, but you're gonna let the guy to 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 soil his oil oats. How many how many other girls is he seeing? The twenty. I don't know who cares. It, it maybe it's none of your business or whatever. <laughs> and I'm not talking about myself. I'm I'm just saying. I think there's people out there that is very cool that you could you could get into a, a quick. I mean a um a sexual uh, thing with. But again, I, you keep thinking I'm trying. I'm not. It's not about getting. You you're sending mixed signals, Karen Bryant. You just said you need to get fucked. I did not say that. I never said that. I never said that. Well, translate in Chinese. When you said to me, mind fuck is about the only thing I'm getting these days. Right. But then I said, <laughs> what do I want? I said, I want somebody who's nice, somebody who makes me laugh, somebody who like maybe make me dinner or do something nice for me. Like that's they're, what I would like. They out there. They out there. There's, there's plenty of one out there. You can okay. have that.
whatever. Let's move on. We're not going to solve my problems. And it's I'm my, me. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. My, uh, yeah. It's like my love life is a effing joke. So well, let's just move on. Hey, so um, on the uh, this weekend though, looky, looky, looky. Um, okay, so I want to get your take because this was just absolutely, obviously, quite wild. But our mascot Cheedy did predict that Leon Edwards was going to win the fight. Um, I know, I know, a lot of people didn't see it coming, and honestly, I didn't see it coming this way either. Um, not, and that's not disrespect to Leon. That's just knowing that Camaro can do what he can do. And Camaro did what he does for most of the fight. And then with a minute left, the head kick her ground. I'll well. tell you this before the fight happened, I thought something like that, him doing a kick or beating him stand up wise could happen. But the way the fight was shaking out, I was like, no, this is not, that's not going to happen. I was very, it, that was very, um, that was, even though I like Usman, that was exhilarating, you know, like when something crazy, it was crazy. So, and it was movie-esque and all that shit, you know. So, you know, kudos to this guy. And I, you know what I do hate, though? Yes, he was losing the fight. But they make it, you know, I think Usman included, they make it like the guy just locked up on that. Now, he's set up a good move you know what i yeah. mean like, Grant, he was getting fucked up for the most i mean well he won how one in impressive style but the other house he was losing obviously he, it was no accident that he you know he didn't do an accident it was not like a gun going off by accident or something like that he set up a he very said. technique that you know uh usman fell for period you know, I mean, to say for people like, oh, boy, he was getting it. Well, too bad. You know, you got to it, it, it. That would be like saying, you know, like a, a team is up in basketball. It happened all the time. A team is kicking the shit out of somebody that's maybe even lesser than them. And then they right. take their fucking foot off the gas or whatever happened and they let the team come back into it. It's you. It's you fucking jobby. To be ahead and to not take and, and to stomp the guts out of that person and there's no yeah. comeback. But it, it happened and it wasn't, you know, Leon made that happen, you know? So fuck, give that fucking guy some credit. Not you, but these fans out there. Same thing they did, the same thing they did to him. They tried to do to Cheeto in the comments. They said, oh, he was getting beat before that. And I want to say, I, I don't even bother with the comments anymore because I don't get into those because it's a waste of my energy. But I want to say, listen, you notice a pattern here? Every Cheeto fight is like that. He's getting beat, check, uh, like um, he's down on the scorecards, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, like in a points game. And then at some point, he throws some kind of fucking technique with a lot of time with the feet that you're not, your brain is not thinking about, and then it comes up and you fucking lights out. He's done it a number of fucking times. So to act like, oh, that just, oh, it was a fluke. He would, oh, God, he's lucky that happened now. He made that to happen. You know, on the, against a, a, a fucking chop level fighter. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's how Cheeto fights. We talked about before he fought we, in the pre, all the stuff leading up to it about how he's a quote unquote slow starter, how he'll sometimes lose the first couple few rounds and I then he comes on he, strong and then not. He throws a fucking like a. Right, a, right. A so it's yeah. not a surprise. That's how he fights. Yeah. And so, and so, yeah, I 100% agree with you on this. On So on this one, to me, Kamaru was doing his thing and 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 I agree with you. Yes, Leon set it up. And I do love the 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 edits, the things that they've cut together of Leon as Rocky. You know, I mean that is crazy. Oh, that is his nickname. Was, and the way they cut it together with the music and the round one and the coaching in the corner. And you, you gotta dig was, and don't effing do this. Like I'm I'm here for it. Take all the money. Like it, it, it's listen. It's 
Another stuff that people need to remember. Think of this too. The fact that he was able to be alive, to be able to be at that point in that late in the fight, yeah, and have a chance to throw a technique like that, mean that he's good enough to survive against the what people are calling the pound for pound greatest welterweight, right. fucking whatever. Right. Okay, so who did that? Who let him survive? It? Are you gonna tell me that that um, 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 Usman just let him survive? No, Leon made it that way. His technique, right. his toughness, his know-how, his his cardio, which we know isn't easy in fucking South South uh, South. What the fuck is South Lake or whatever? Yeah, see, uh, Salt Lake City. You know. So there's so much that Leon was in charge of to make that to happen and you to, to discredit the guy. And no matter if he was to lose a fucking he match or whatever, it's not a lucky punch or what? it's not a lucky. There wasn't in an exchange throwing wild shit and a, and a, and a lucky punch card. That is a, that is a, a oh, it's funny because you do see it here and there, that technique, you know? But I'm surprised because in Karach, you see that it, that's a standard fucking technique to throw one, two, and the fucking head kick behind it. Yeah. Be more so than a hook because you're not going to see that a lot in Karach. But you are going to see the one, two, wabap. Because another reason for it is you're in a very safe place when you throw the kick, too. It's very less dangerous because your head is not... When you throw one true hook you in there potentially you've seen it a, a lot of times two guys is throwing the hook or whatever you've seen mm -hmm. like dan hardy and fucking um can't remember who the fuck did that to him anyway um but when you throw that one true kick your head is back here you're not getting countered you understand right. so you have the benefit of the the height blinding you while that thing come, while you minimize your own hisk. For me, I love that 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 check. And you barely ever see that. It's funny. And until recently, one thing I used to always say, the front kick is always there. Because as you know, my, my dad was a, a Kahari champion in the old days. And so I've been around Kahari a lot of times, okay? And maybe some of that stuff is no good for MMA, whatever. But one stuff that's always a bread and butter in Karach is just a straight front kick, whether it be right. through, the, through the fucking solar plex or through the fucking chin. And you barely ever see it. Then when when um, when um, Anderson Silva did it that one time, everybody acted like it was as if he did the fucking triple Lindy from from um, from back to school. Right. It was like, oh, Leoto did it to Randy Couture like, right at the middle. Finally, someone fucking did it. And now after that, of course, people have did it more. But it's one of those stuff, especially when the way people is in I mean, MMA is blocked. Right, a lot. right, it's, right. That thing is, you know, just like it, you can get uppercut there. That fucking thing is high there, especially because people don't throw that much. They're waiting for this. To, they're waiting for these angles, which, you know, the, the leg kicks come at an angle. This come, the high kicks. But very rarely are they thinking about just boop which can come up with not very much setup and it's very easy to disguise it, especially if you throw, just like with like the head kick coming from here, you know, like you disguise the leg kick and then you set up for the high kick. You can also throw a couple to the midsection or to the liver or whatever those, those kicks where your toes is hit them in the, you know, throw a couple of those and then just whoop, you know what I mean? Just hide to the fucking um, face, you know? I'm not kidding here. It's, it's, it's easier than a lot of the other shit. It's like you don't have to be on an angle or nothing. You're just there and you kind of look there and you just go bump and kick there. It's not, I don't know, it's not that hard. It's it's like a dummy can do it. And I'm, I'm surprised that more of these high level fighters don't use it more because it's, a, yeah. it's just such a simple, easy technique. That's a lot of the stuff they do and good at is harder than that even, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyway, fuck anyway, it. yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense to see it go like that. Um, 
you know, uh, I, I, I really, like I said, I love the, the kind of things that were cut together with Leon, you know, the Rocky stuff and they'll have a, um, what do you call it? They'll have a, a trilogy fight. And, uh, you know, I think that's pretty cool. However it'll go, but it is interesting and, and no, really no disrespect to Kamaru. It's just exciting when a championship changes hands you know what yeah. I mean? It's just, it's just fun. It's just fun. It just adds some new it, blood. It, it just... Look, and he set up. You know what? Usman, for his legacy, I'm sure he's pissed off, you know? But on the flip side of this, he's one of those guys. I've heard him say, I'd like to fight Jackie Powell and all that shit, okay? Right. Well, here's a better way of getting... Now he's going to get maybe that Wembley fight or whatever. The... True. Gonna be set up now, even though he had to get knocked out, that's unfortunate. But he's now set up for probably the biggest money fight of his life, now, you know. I guess so. I, yeah, I think. I mean, I think like the, the second fight, if he's gonna be a Wembley and all that, there's so much because okay, what other fight he's gonna get now that, that would be people would be that excited, you know, if he just kept winning, you know. True, true, true. Now, oh shit, what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to be in Wembley. They never did in Wembley. Oh, God, oh, it's going to be, you know, the England's got all of the UK, you know, in Europe or whatever, going to be behind and the African, the Jamaican, and all this and that, the other thing. I think it's going to be so exciting and so much of a, um, a big deal for both of these guys. And you, you couldn't have uh, hired a better script for that. Yeah, well, Leon, he, this uh, Herman Sarai is saying Leon Edwards against Kamaru Usman in England next year. Uh, is the best choice. So yeah, it yeah. is. It's a great choice. You know what I um, love? What I really love is that Leon. They asked him about Nate Diaz. Uh huh. Would you? What about that? You know, if a crazy stuff happened and he beat uh, Hamza or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey, that would be great." He was like, "I would definitely give him a shot." He's a gangster, and I just love that he doesn't shy away. Like. You know, people make fun of Leon because he kind of got wobbled up and, and looked like he was on shaky legs at the end of the fight with Diaz, you know? Yeah. But he leaned into that. He don't hunt. He's like, I give that guy credit. He was like, I was fucked up. You know, he was like, I never been wobbled in a fight. He wobbled me. He's a gangster, you know? I like that. He give you credit where credit is due. And he don't try to be like a lot of other fighters in his position would be like, listen, if I fight that man, that guy, I already took care of that guy. You know what I mean? He right. gives back, and I, 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 I like his attitude. I like Leon's attitude a lot. Well, and I was reading um, something, and maybe it was a transcript or whatever, but he was, yeah, admitting that, like, you know, his body just wasn't reacting and responding the way he thought it was, and they had, like, a good round, but then it shut down, and he's just like, I can't believe, you know, like, it came to this, and I'm here in this moment, and, like, my body's not responding. Like, it is, it is interesting, right, because... Uh, Last fight, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, in in general, right? Like you hear, you hear, you hear moments like he was talking about it, or and I've spoken to, you know, uh, let's say you're talking to an actor who, uh, or somebody who like was just about to give up, and then somebody said yes to their oh, show, yeah. or yeah. you know, step like when you're right on the edge of like, yeah, f this, uh -huh. like being right on that edge and then something comes to you and sort of Leon was kind of speaking to it being kind of like that. I'm sure. And like, and, and him crying the tears of joy in like that moment, like he'd never had those kind of tears of joy before. And yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty heavy. And that's actually wow. really serious. That feeling of give like giving up and like, yeah, I guess it's just not going to work out. Like it's, it's a metaphor. It does. It's that's pretty what, amazing. That's the thing about sport and, and combat sport in, in particular. That shit, there's no bigger metaphors for life -y than these fucking things that happen in that cage, you know? Because, I mean, God, are you, you know, like how many people haven't felt like that in some situation or in, in, in the bigger picture or whatever, and they want to give up and throw in the fucking shower and you know what that means, you know? And, and, and I mean, in life, you want to give up on life. -y. And to see that it's possible when you just, when it, when you can't see that it's possible, and it's still possible. You know what I mean? 
and it reminds you like, ah, I've never count you fucking stuff out. And another thing is true, you need your friends. You need the people behind you because without those fucking cultures, those cultures should get, I don't know. He, the they, supporting actor. <laughs> they, they need something because yeah. they wouldn't let him give up. Yeah. Even when it looked few- Stop feeling sorry for yourself yeah. and this and that. Like, it was amazing. And easily they could have said to themselves, yeah, I don't believe he could, he got it. You know, like, you know, they could have been like, okay, champ. Hit him with a one, you know, like, and just kind of. Yeah, just stay alive. Sick of move. Stay alive. Yeah. Those motherfuckers never let him stop. They, they never let him think that they didn't believe. Right. So that gave him the last shred of like, why do these guys, I guess these guys think I can do this shit. You know what I mean? But we, of course he did it himself, but without that, those guys. And you need the hype people in your fucking corner in the cage and also in fucking life, you know? You need at least one fucking person that's gonna go, and whether that's your father or, you, or your significant other or your fucking friend or whatever the fuck it is, you need, cause sometimes you're not gonna believe on yourself, you know? You, you, some, at some point you're gonna go, I don't see it, you know, fuck. And then somebody's gonna go, I, look, he remember this, he remember fucking, you know what I mean, who you are. He remember who the fuck you are. You can forget that. And that's why I think there's going to be some dick in your life, Karen Branch. You're going to fucking remember who you are. You're going to remember the cheeks that you have it behind you. Behind every good woman is a good cheeks. Is a good, a great pair of cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I, from your lips to God's ears. Um, anyway, move, moving on. Um, it to my ears, to my, <laughs> to my lap. Um, I know we, uh, I know we talked about uh, to Costa and Luke uh, with with Jason. Was there was there anything? I don't know if there was anything else from that uh, main card you wanted to get to, or if there was anything else from that. But it, you know, it is just uh, uh, you know, Costa's good. Like he's good. Well, he's, he's good. Very, there was a good fight. Very good. But I, I'm not kidding what I said. Cardio aside, if there was different cardio situation there. I truly believe that Hawkhold would have won that fight. Oh, yeah? I do. That's my opinion. Yeah. And everybody got a fucking opinion. But sure. I, be I believe that he just hand out of fucking... He could not make his body... He was so tired. He was and, so and, tired. I mean, have you ever seen a fucking fighter <laughs> put his hands... I mean, like, in front of the guy? I seen it after hounds or whatever. Or somebody maybe hands on the hips far away from them. He was like close to him doing that shit. Uh, he was his in the be, before the childness kicked in and the fucking broken nose or whatever he had going on. He looked to me. He looked good and he looked like he knew what the fuck he was doing. Yeah, it's tough too because it's like you were saying, like uh, with with Jason. Like sometimes it's a question of. It's not that fighters look bad and they could still beat people, yeah. But time does catch up to them, I guess. It's, yeah, but it's I, I like what I'm saying is I don't believe that 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 what we just saw was a broken down, a physically broken down man. I don't think. Okay, that, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear like you're saying. Chime, it's not like you know when Jordan was done and it was like he was with the Wizards or whatever. That was okay. He's not Jordan no more. He can't, his, his body just can't do, he can barely get up. You know what I mean? I mean right, like, right, right. That's a situation where you're like, yeah, yeah, it, it's time. He's too old now. That's not what I saw there. I think what happened is his, his desire got old. You know, his desire for the sport of fighting is gone. I don't, I still physically, I don't think it would be like that every time. I don't think that he's going to get into every fight and start. I think that once he got a couple more, if he lost that one, whatever, he fight like some other fucking dude and another guy. I feel like he could have a henna sounds, but not if his fucking cabbage piece isn't screwed on. Well, right. And the other, and he's only going to get excited or fired up for bigger names. And so the, like he, yeah, you know but, what I mean, he's not going to get excited to fight some guy who's not ranked or whatever. Like he's going to get fired up to fight Apollo Costa type thing. Yeah, like, but, you know what I mean? But you got to remember that layoff. That's a long chimey. And, and just, 
the 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 questions that go in your mind of like, can I still do this or whatever? I think that some of those questions would have been answered because of this fucked up fight here. And he would have gone, okay, if I didn't get tired, I know I can hang with that young man. Yeah, would have, could have, should, I guess. I don't know. I, it's it's just, it's tough. I agree. I agree with him stopping because he don't have the desire and you can't have that career if you don't desire it anymore. Yeah. So but I just, way to that his, I don't believe that his, um, his skills and his athleticism was deteriorate to a point where it's like, Oh, I'm too old for this shit. I, I I didn't see that personally, but maybe listen, I see a lot of I'm not, you know, they all knowing well let's say opinions is like an asshole. Um every time to wipe yeah. Vinny Magalesh is one. <laughs> yeah. No, is it like Vinny Magalesh? You <laughs> is he's an asshole. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I'm just looking to see if there was anything here. Um, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if there was just any other comments on this. Um, people are just saying that the muscle takes a lot of oxygen and thin air, but they were equally muscular. Costa Bohashinia is really muscular. Like, so. And I, I don't know. I could be hung. I, I don't know. But what my eyes was looking at through my baby Browns, what I saw was a guy who can still fight. I, he was just dying for oxygen. And, and let me tell you something. I don't yeah. know how Costa was out there, but you know, if, if, if uh, Par Parilla, uh, Parillo said that, that they was out there for a week, that's not enough to get acclimated. You remember, um, what was it? Um, I think it was Vedumi versus... Um, um, yeah, when he went and beat Kane, Sea level Kane. Kane. That's the whole he, thing where Sea level Kane comes from. In the, the, the Mexico City. Now, here's the yep. thing. I, I want to say that um, 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 Vedum was the, out there for all, I think it was two months. He, went he was there, there for several weeks, months. yes. Okay. You can see the difference in when they was fighting, yep. you know, and if you remember, like they said, uh, with Leon and Usman, Usman trains at even higher altitude than your child every day. So that was nothing for him. Right, and but Leon and Leon went out a couple weeks early, though. Yeah, but but yeah, uh, so it should have been a fair fight in terms of elevation training. If couple, anything, Camaro still should have had an edge. A couple weeks does not. Uh, no, exactly. Camaro it, still should still yeah. should have had an edge. Yeah, and I 100%. think he did. I think he did. Right. All those like, right. to to have to fight off all that hassling and stuff like that is demoralizing enough anyway. When someone's better than you at that skill set, but when you're sucking wind, oof. Agreed. Hey, listen, can I refill my water? Can you entertain the masses for a second? Yeah, I guess I got to do every stuff sound here. Um, no, but when we come back, I was going to say I wanted to move on to the um, craziest things that we've seen in fights because we were talking about the bloodbath and we talked about that before. Like I said, I just need to refresh my water. But like, for example, to me, one of the craziest things was when Nick Diaz laid down in the middle <laughs> of the fight. Um, to me, that was pretty crazy. So here's the thing. We can either talk about craziest things we've seen in fights or our favorite movie and TV coaches. We can take whichever angle you want to go next. Let me just refill my water. I only okay. need about 45 seconds. Go ahead. I just want to know where you want to go next. Thank you, Chinese. Okay. Let me hit some of these. Uh... Yeah, that's a good point, uh, uh, Lord of the Pies. I was saying to to a friend of mine during that fight th that night was that uh, why even bother having uh, fights at places with these fucking elevation? Clearly, like it's not as good. I mean, clearly it's not these. Oh, most of the fighters on the card can't afford to come out there for that long like that uh, beforehand. So you're going to have compromised fighters. Why would you even want that? Uh, go uh, fuck Elevation. Why do you got to go to uh, uh, South Lake City of all places, you know? 
go through somewhere, go through Oklahoma, somewhere flash. Um, I just don't understand why you even bother with that. It, it's fuck it. Um, all the notch. I could beat anybody in Jiu Jitsu on my prime, except my God and Jesus. Uh, Usman was, yeah, you can say that again. Usman was Hamza delayed. Yeah, go to New Orleans, it's under watch. Uh, wait, is that, does that mean you're gonna get extra card deal? Why beige don't age? I also, you gotta give me, well, a couple stuff because it's, it's made out of caramel slash gingerbread and all that stuff with cinnamon right. that stuff oh there they are I on the last one last yes stuff that I don't eat and it's it's help with the it, with you know uh, with the aging process okay so what are we doing are we doing are we doing coaches I or are we doing people just wanted to spotlight on Hanato Laranja I guess that's they I mean okay to. okay okay I'm okay kidding, I'm kidding. um okay for How me, about I we do the coaches those, thing, huh? Or what were you going to say? Both of those subjects. So either one, both, whatever. Okay. Well, maybe we do the coaches thing because we talked a little bit about um, the uh, – we talked a little bit about the um, the uh, weirdest fight moments or whatever. So I'm curious for you, um, what are some of your favorite – um fighter or not fighter but just like coaches in general that have been on it's so fucking TVs mad. and movies and I, I'll give you a couple of a couple of examples for me who okay. I love um well first and foremost I do love um coach Taylor from Friday Night Lights Clear Eyes Full Hearts Can't Lose um I was a big fan of Friday Night Lights that TV show so I loved that so not the movie I liked the movie too I but definitely you, did. Well, let's be fair. The, 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 the choice between you watching uh, Billy Bob Thorch or that, and Kyle. Guy, or that fucking guy that looked like, um, you know. Kyle, Kyle which, Cutie Pants. Which for my, for the life of me, I can't understand why that guy never had the career of like George Clooney or. Because he's. That guy. Totally not, cute. Not. Like the a list because not only is that guy good looking and manly or whatever, but he's a fucking great actor. Like, you remember him in Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, I I swear he strikes me as one of those people who maybe doesn't want it. Bull bad. Bad. No, no. I don't know because I agree with you. He's he's so I he's so I'm there for it. Like I love George Clooney. So yeah. uh yeah, oh, uh, sure. uh, but I, I just don't understand this because. When I, I saw, especially this brought it home to me. When I saw Wolf of Wall Street, I consider Leonardo, Leonardo uh, DiCaprio to be just a, one of the best fucking actors. You know, I I I really think even though he's young and whatever and party and stuff like that, I love him. He's Big such fan. a sensational fucking actor. And when you can go toe to toe and put your fucking foot on on an actor of that caliber's throat in a scene, that's that's high level. You know what I mean? So, and I, it made me think like, why are we only seeing this guy in like a big Scorsese movie now? Like, what the fuck happened? Why is this guy only on TV shows and shit like that? I don't get it. I don't know. Well, he had the, he, so he did Friday Night Lights. Then he has a show that's on Netflix called Brotherhood or something. Then he had, uh, he's been in some movies. I, I, I agree with but, you. I'm a huge fan. I think he's great. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is this guy not in the conversation with, like, why is he not a fucking A-list leading man, you know? I don't know. I agree with you. I think he's I think he's fantastic. Uh, okay, right. so another coach right. that I love. Yeah. Obviously, we love Coach Ted Lasso because that show okay. is... Shit. I never seen... Okay, well, you are missing out by not watching Ted Lasso. Lasso. A fucking channel that I don't have. What is it on? Like, it's on... Apple TV+. <laughs> Plus. Oh, I don't have that one. Okay, I that settles it. I need to get that one because there's too much shit on there that I want to see. 
Well, Apple TV Plus is is worth it just for Ted Lasso alone. But um, okay, uh, here's one. Can you get behind? Um, okay, I love Jimmy Dugan, which is there's no crying in baseball. Oh, that's, that's, that's there's that's no great, crying in baseball. Let's, great, so Le so League that's of Their Own. Um, the Tom Hanks and League of Their Own. I love. Um, I also love um, Rip Torn, isn't it? Patches of Hulahan and Dodgeballs. <laughs> Coming up with some good ones. I, I forgot about, uh, for, I didn't think about Patches or Hula Ham. So. <laughs> Patches or Hula Ham. Okay. Patches, Patches yeah. or Hula Ham. Okay. When, when we were, when we were, when we were really little kids, Hinato, I don't know oh, if I, you remember the show. Oh, wait, wait, please. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. White the White Shadow. shadow. Ah, I knew it. Yeah. I love the White Shadow so oh, much. Salahmi and, and who else? Salahmi. I, um, I mean the the the, the kids. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I know, I know, I I know. I'm forgetting because I'm mixing so it up with Welcome Back, Cotter. But like, yeah, I love The White Shadows so much. Way so back good. when. That's that's a special show, and that you can't. I was looking for that recently to watch to like watch all the seasons. You know, there wasn't that many seasons too, but I feel like I couldn't find it nowhere. You know what I mean? It, I was kind of surprised. It was so good. Okay, so I love I loved that. Okay. Um, I also love John Candy as Irv Blitzer in Cool Runnings. Oh, Cool Runnings. I forgot about that, too. Yeah, yeah. John Candy, because I just love John Candy anyway. Oh. But John Candy is good. Like, because Cool Runnings, you know, is great. Obviously, yeah. I'm Jamaican. You like, have to make it like, it, it's cool. It, you know. But John Candy is just great anyway, whatever, putting that team together and like, and yeah, yeah I know I messed up back in the day and I cheated on him. Like, he's an all time comedy great for her. He, he is, he is. And then the other one that I love, uh, you know, you got to love either, it, it depends on where you're going, whether you're like team Mr. Miyagi or whether you like, you know, the bad guy. You know uh, what? For some fucking, I don't know how I didn't thought of Mr. Miyagi. Of course, Mr. Miyagi. And I mean, technically, he's kind of a coach, right? Yeah, and on the flip side, for asshole, memorable coach, uh, John Creasy. That's what I'm the saying. The, or the flip side of that, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you have that now. You know, I'm glad that you, you sprinkled in because at first when you said this to me, I only thought about serious stuff like fucking Hoosiers, you know, Gene mm. Hackman or whatever. That's where my head went. And then I thought, and then I started to think about it more and more. Most of the coaches I like is from funny shit. You and know? like Coach Carter too, or you got like what's his what you got like Henry Winkler and Waterboy and stuff. <laughs> I didn't th I didn't even thought about that, but yeah, I started thinking more and more. Most of my favorite coaches probably came from comedy, to be honest. Like I immediately thought of um the coach from fucking Major League, you know. Yes. You yes. know, I'm too old to be running in fucking locker rooms. You say, but, you know, put that bitch on the phone. And when he pisses on the contract or whatever, you know, right. in the, right. the field. I love that fucking guy. I don't even know what his name is, that guy who played. You know, he's like, he would be like the poor man's Wilford Brimley. Yes, totally. Um, totally. And then um, um, you have he, and this is one I thought he was going before you said, when you was talking about why, before, when you was going to say white shadow, okay? But before you said TV, then when you said TV, I knew immediately it was going to be White Shadow because you yeah. said something about from back in the day or whatever. But I thought you was going to uh, Buttermaker from fucking, um, from fucking Bad News Bears. Oh, well, yeah. I that, thought about Walter Matthau from the Bad News Bears. Like, I Walter really Matt thought about that one because that's, come on. That's one of my all-timey favorite fucking part and coaches and just, oh. It's so amazing. So fucking good. Love that shit. Um, it's amazing. But also speaking to your Wilford Brimley, yeah. doesn't he play the coach in The Natural? Yeah, and he's fucking fantastic. Which is a heartbreaking movie. Like The Natural is one of those movies for me. I want to go, well, I'm that, screwed. That, I'm that, watching this for the rest of the time it's on. No matter my, where I am in that movie, I watch it. Yeah, that's my favorite baseball movie, period. I love that movie. But I thought about that character, and although he's one of the great characters of the movie... The way he was so salty to to um, um, Hoy Hob until yeah. he started fucking knocking it out of the fucking park or whatever yes. made me think like half that movie you like fuck you you know what I mean like you, he's a problem uh, in in half that movie you know yeah but yeah he's great but as an actor and as a character it's a great character but but takes him a while but he's not likable right right I, 
almost like, you know, who I like better in that movie as a likable coach is his assistant coach, who is that guy Farnsworth or whatever, um, or William, or is it, you know, he played, you know, he's a heel old guy and he was in a, he plays the old guy in a, so many movies. He was in that movie called The Straight Story that like, he, right before he died, he almost won an Oscar for it. I think he died and then the movie came out. I don't out. know who you're talking about. Sorry. Fuck. You, <laughs> you guys the old know. guy who yeah. plays old guys the who old almost guy. got an Oscar, Oscar before he died. Yeah, Sorry, man. bro. You seen The Natural a lot of time? Of course. His right hand man, Wilford Brimley's right hand man. The one. Oh, okay. I know who you're talking about. And he has a heel, like Texas accent or whatever. Yeah, he, I know who you're talking about, but I don't know his name. He was so likable. He was the one. Who like took uh, Hoy Hob to dinner, uh, like to yeah. make him feel good in the beginning, you know, like to yeah. make him feel at home. That yeah. guy is the kind of coach I want for him, you know. So yeah, so another coach I liked was um, Denzel in. Um, in um, fuck. Uh, um, we are not. We, we are. With we are titans 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 we are we are the titans or we, we are the titans Titan. it's the the name now we are the titans or we now i'm thinking once we're warriors we are the. no titans. it's not called we, we are, are the titans, titans. it's called it's called what once we're titans no um uh, we was the titan <laughs> i remember the one kid's name is sunshine um, what the heck is that movie called it, we were the Titans. Somebody co comments, comments. Remember the Titans. Remember the fucking Titan. I knew we can't it remember it. We're like, remember the name of the main movie. And we can't even anyway, the I love Remember the Titans. And, uh, Denzel's, great in, Denzel's great in Remember the Titans. Denzel's yeah, like, great. he's great. He's oh, I didn't great. even thought of this. Well, first of all, let's not forget. I didn't even want to put this down because I feel I like know who you're going to say. Mickey, because it's just cheating. I know, I know, I right. know, right? Cut me, Rick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. It seemed too obvious. He'll kill you to death inside of me. Yeah. Um, you got no chance, man. Wait. So who? I know who else you're gonna say though. Um, um. Wait. Fuck. I just lost my whole train of thought because of Mickey. Wait. Oh, oh. One other thing, and it comes up in inspirational uh, uh, clips. They play it, even though I think it's a shitty movie. It's kind of a fun movie to watch, and it's over the chop. Any given Sunday, dude. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Okay. Pacino yeah. in Any Given Sunday. That's now, exactly that, what I was waiting for. Yeah. You may not feel like you. I don't even remember the fucking words. Dude, but... I I remember doing. I worked a press junket for that movie and stuff like that. Like I I'm actually a fan of that movie. It's corny as it is. But it is boy, is it corny? And nothing is. And so, and dude, everybody chews the scenery in that movie. Everybody chews up the scenery. The the hiding is so on the nose. It's so fucking on the nose that the hiding by um Oliver Stone like. When that guy's in the hospital or whatever, he's, I'm a quarterback for Christ's sake. Put up the volume on this stuff or whatever. I'm, I want action. You know, and you're like, oh, you're like, oh, God, I, you know, and, and, but, and the, the thing that bummed me out the most in the movie, I hate when sports movies do this. When they can't get the heel names for teams for the sport that they oh, do. Oh, Yeah. And they call the Super Bowl the Pantheon Cup, and the fucking that it's the Sharks and the versus the the fucking whatever. The it the, sounds it feels so whatever. corny. Like it's always you're always like oh, oh that doesn't feel good. It 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 is so cringy and fucking. You go like ugh. There's nothing that check me out more than that. I hate that. That's why when I saw that movie, which maybe you can throw this in there. Even though was he a coach, he was more of a trainer. Did you see that movie with that he sent one with the um, Adam Sandler where he like finds this hustle? Kid and, no, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? I Is it worth watching? First of all, I was like, man, I'll miss that one. I gave it a shot. It was head and shoulders better than I thought it was gonna be. See, I had no, I have no, I have no expectations. It's, it's just that I just fine. didn't know what I just didn't know if it Is was. I don't know for anybody. But if I love like, Dana. Like she's great. Like I love Latifah. If you like basketball, yes, I would say you can't miss it. Like it because 
on on the flip side is the opposite of um, any given Sunday. They got so much NBA shit in that that li- there's not a player who plays in the fucking movie who's not a fucking heel player. Like if oh, they really? have, if they have a game, even a fucking scrimmage, every fucking face you see, even the person on the back is an NBA player is mind blowing. Like you almost think to yourself, how the fuck did he do- get- pull this together? Yeah. They got every NBA heel stuffs. They got heel commentators. They got they got the heel people and everything. It's crazy. Yeah, I was very I was very very impressed at the heelism in that one, Ooh. and it gives you some of those hockey vibes of like this kid trying to make it in an impossible situation. You know what I mean? Like, and it, I love it. It was great. I thought it was great. Heel cool. great. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll have to check it out. I mean. Obviously, it pops up on my, um, you know, like suggested list uh, yeah. every time, you know. Uh, Let's put it to you this way. You won't be disappointed. Maybe it's not going to be your favorite of all time, but you won't be like, oh, that was a piece of shit. You'll be like, yeah, that was, at the very least, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the coaches, coaches, back to the But coaches. yeah, no, if there was anybody else. Um, Maybe that black yeah. coach in Lionheart. That bet against no, I guess he's bad because he bet against Lion March at the end. Mm, mm, mm. Uh the, 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 the Nick Mol- Nick Nolte in the movie with Shaq? Are they being yeah, facetious? So fucking... Are they being facetious? I don't know that one. Blue oh, Chips. That's great, great movie. That's called Blue Chips, yeah. Uh, um but but he's not the nicest fucking guy and he's a cheater. I mean, he's like He's got that classic Nick Nolte. Well, God damn it. God damn it. I need you to score more points. God damn it. Are they shaving points? Are they not? Are they cheating? They're are not they... shaving points. The deal is, is he's... This team, before he got it, got into a scandal. And so everybody's watching them. So from then on, they having to be heel clean, okay? But because of that, the fucking program is sunk because they just don't have great... You need the players to win the title. And he's won a title before, or many of them, whatever. And so they're sick of losing, and there's the pressure and all this kind of stuff. And he's kind of like becoming this Bobby Knight guy, he's throwing chairs and shit and all this kind of stuff. Finally, he just realizes, like, he, he does that Faustian bar, Bach again, you know, where he's like, fuck it, we're going to, I guess we're going to pay for these fucking people, you know? And then so he gets Shaq, he gets, you know, he gets the who's who of guys that should be going to the you know, these other Duke and blah, blah, blah. And then it was tough back then. The guy who was on him, the investigator who's on the case, like FBI, whatever it is about the money scheme, you know, the, the, the shit, um, is uh, Ed O'Neill. But at the time, he was still on Married with Children. So it was like you couldn't not think of Al Bundy at the time. Right. We, it wasn't. Now you can think of him in other stops. At the time, it was like, oh, like Al Bundy. You just, it, it felt weird to see him in this because he was doing a good job. He was like a good actor, you know? Yeah. But he was just like, ah, that's Al Bundy, you know? <laughs> but it was a big move. And Jack was a good actor in there. And it had Penny Hardaway before he was like Healy Penny Hardaway. It was fucking good. I like that movie. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And it's cool to see young Shaq. He's so young in that fucking... He's like slender. Oh, gosh. All right. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I don't remember that one. But, you know, people are saying, um, you know, Gene Hackman uh, in Hoosiers. That's like one of the classics, Brother, obviously. We said that one hour ahead. Yeah, that's one of the classics. Um, but, yeah. So those are some of the... So those are some of the great ones. I'm trying to think, like, uh, was... Um, was Paul Newman the coach in Slapshot or not? No. He was, just... he was like a player coach. Oh, yeah. Slap. Okay. Slapshot has aged so beautifully for me. It's great. Because that movie can transform. CM Punk's favorite movie. Is that high? Listen, if if you're young, I would say to a, a millet, not a, well, maybe even a millennial or a generation Z or whatever they call the young ones now, or even younger, whatever, all those people. If you want to see what it was really like before, you know, the internet and modern shit, but not that fucking long ago, like stuff like right. people like us actually lived like when we was young, you know, it's just a trip when you watch the movie, how much stuff has changed. 
You know what I mean? And that movie yeah. drives it home so much. Just how like the attitudes of people in, in, in professional sports, like the no safety equipment, the fucking, it's just, it, it was such a, it wasn't that long ago, but it feels like it's the fucking 1800s. Forever ago, exactly. But the technology and the, the attitudes about stuff. And it's such a fucking chime capsule of that specific special chime in history, you know? That's and cool. just such a it was, it was so much fun to watch that movie. I love it. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time, but it, uh, I remember always really liking it. It doesn't disappoint. If you watch yeah. that, you'll have a blast watching that one. I just I watched it like during the lockdown again, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, fuck. it was just pure enjoyment. Yeah, no, I always did really like it. Um, and I'm not even I, a hockey guy. Like I don't hate hockey, but I'm I, I don't I don't know you know shit. I don't know shit. You know. I just I watch you. playoffs. I watch Stanley Cup, maybe you know. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, we are. We mentioned yes, Walter. We yeah, also mentioned yeah, Walter Matthau. One of my very favorite ones. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Hanato. Um, we've been on for like almost two and a half hours here now. Been on there for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I um, mad if we if we if we have it up here. Yeah, so listen, so I was going to say, and I kind of briefly touched on it earlier, um, but this time next week, your girl KB will be on her way to Paris. Oh, God, yeah. Why are you beating a fucking dead horse? <laughs> um, why so, they don't pay for me to win out there? Why, how about why they know what? Why they don't pay me to win out there? I, I'll be good for people's morale. You would be. But yeah, yeah, I would so, a cohesion. And have I, a, agree, a, I agree, I agree. But so... Um, you know what I would wear for her? A low cut striped shirt with a fucking <laughs> you know, with a fucking uh, neckerchief and a fucking bouquet. I grow my mustache. I would be something else in that environment. They would think at I any, was a crab. At any rate, uh, so maybe we do this next Monday since I'll be on the road on Tuesday. Hey, look, we we'll have a gallivant all over France. Uh, you know, you go to London, France, whatever, while I'm holding this thing together. I'm the glue. Right. I mean, because and then, and then I am staying extra. So I'm I might be on vacation the following but, Tuesday. We get you could consider not going for the sake. <laughs> no. no, I definitely can't consider that. Well, the, I, I can consider the, the, the week after the Paris show. I will be there. On vacation, I, I can work out the timing. Maybe we could do something. Maybe I'll just be on vacation. We'll work. We'll look into that. You know, but it seems like one of us has put his heart and soul, and just no, his, oh, one of us has put a lot of work into this, and that's me. And I and, might need a week off. You know the inner workings of this stuff and the the logistic, the 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 check the IG. The, and all of that, and then there's on the flip side, the people who enjoy the spoils. No, eh, whatever. Yeah. Um, at any rate, we'll figure it out. But um, Hanato, I was letting people know at the beginning of the show, and I should remind them now. Uh, not only should they subscribe here on YouTube and everything, hit the subscribe button, and we're also on Twitch and Twitter and um, festivities.com, but uh, this will also moments after, you know, just give me a few minutes. Uh, this will be available as an audio download. We are now available as an audio download. We are on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on Amazon Music. You can, can tell, I you know who, if you have one of those devices, you can tell her to play our show uh, and just tell her the episode number. Uh, and right now there's about 11 episodes there. And I'm going to keep adding a few more, you know, from the back catalog going in reverse order. Uh, over the next, you know, a couple few weeks or whatever. So, but yeah, we can, you can now listen to us too. You know how I joke, I'm always joke about how we can't win no matter what it, they're going to say, like, <laughs> where's the, where's the novelization of this? Transcript, the, right. Whatever, you know, like, I did see a couple of comments that was like, audio, why would anyone want to watch it on audio? And I'm going to just throw the fucking computer. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no, I know that they actually are on our side with that comment, but it's just funny to me that it's like, it's never gonna be you. There's no way to win. 
No. There's, no way, there's just just no way to win. Yeah. No, there is not. There's not a way to win. Um, yeah. There isn't. But anyway, we're there. We're trying to make it available for everybody. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate you joining us. And if you got here late at all, go back and rewind and watch the interview with Jason Perillo. He is a coach to so many amazing fighters. And he had just great stories and just a, just a cool guy. And uh, yeah. What, what's up, Vanessa? Oh, my dog was gone. Look. Hold on. <laughs> wow. At any rate, uh, yeah. So Spotify. Sorry, I, I, she. It's okay. I thought, like, sound that like she was choking or something. I think maybe she was having a bad dream or some shit. Oh no. She's okay. I just gave her a kiss. She gave me. I, I put my face there, and she went. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, I, okay. I, That's I, sweet. I, would feel, I would feel like if she's over there choking to death for some reason. And I'm, <laughs> uh, let me finish up the. Like, yeah, let me wrap the, up the the backwash of the podcast. Like the this the, that sucks. The of of the course, podcast. go and see your baby. She dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's. Yes. <laughs> no. So let's get out of here. Let's let you see your pup. Oh, but uh, we can't get out of there. But she's okay. Um. Anyway, okay. yeah. So people can find us as an audio download now, or uh, but yes, video wise is what we um, you know, you where you know, I feel like we excel on video, but. People can find us a, a number of different places. You know, that's our brand. Anyway, this was episode 49, Hanato, which means we're almost at a year's worth of episodes, which is crazy. God. Wait a second. Wow. We started last September. Isn't that crazy? I feel like 30 fucking years at this point. It does feel like a long time. It actually does. Isn't that crazy? It's been almost a year already. It, just like with every stuff, it feels like it's been that that it's been quick as fuck. Like I can't believe it's been a year. And then on the flip side, I feel like it can't. I can't believe it's only been a year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Just like I've been doing this shit for a long time, but then also I don't know. It's crazy. I feel like my dog's life has gone quick. You know. But then right. I feel like I just got her yesterday. I mean, um, that I've been with her for fucking my whole life. -y. You know what I'm saying? It's, right. the, 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 they both exist at the same time. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, I do yeah. know. But I do I'm, know. I'm happy that, having said that, I'm happy that we've lasted this long. And I guess that's a good thing that I feel like it's been long because... Um, it means that it, it it's like um it's in the rhythm. It's like a something we do, you know. It's like it feel like it's been a ham for, you know, like we we this is what we we do in this shit, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a part of the the fabric of our lives now. It's part of the fabric of the American zeitgeist, uh, uh, to be honest, and also of the MMA zeitgeist. I love that word zeitgeist. That's it's true. Word. Who else? Is, nobody's talking about any of the other park yet. They talk the about zeitgeist. It. It's a good word. It's a good word. <clears throat> but yeah. Thursday night festivity. They can't stop talking about that one. They can't. They can't. Um, at any rate, thank you guys for joining us. And thank you to Jason Perilla, who was on with us earlier. Uh, yeah, uh, go back and check it out. But listen, episode 49, which means we've had a who's who of guests prior to this. So go back and look. Your favorites have probably already been on. And if they haven't been on, they will be on soon. Just, you know, drop a message sometimes about who you think you'd like to have on as a guest and stuff. We have a, um, we do have a who's who. Yeah. We're one of the only one can say that. You know what I mean? A lot of these other fucking podcasts, sometimes it's like you don't have a who. You have a who? <laughs> yeah, have who's a that? Who, who the who who, fuck is that guy? Fuck? Right. We've, we've yeah. got literally like big names. Even on some of the biggest fucking podcasts that we listen to, like uh, sometimes they'll have, they had somebody on Spotify smart list the other day and i was like who the fuck is that for her and it doesn't mean the guy's not not good but i was like i never heard of that guy in my life uh right. we don't have nobody like that everybody go oh they got that person oh god they got that person they got that person they got that person yeah we don't put Absolutely. no we don't put no nope. our neighbor or whoever oh, god, I, <laughs> I still That's got right. from year of living dangerous nice yeah you're looking good you're looking good all right folks 
Well, we appreciate you joining us, um, everybody uh, from across the various time zones and stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you on the next one, right? And if you're someone I'm involved with sexually, I'll see you soon. Good luck. Ciao.